Chapter 81, The Princess and Old Friends at Kajarsi City's Palace District There is a row of mansions built in the style that smells strongly of culture foreign to the all and empire. That is where the embassy for envoys stay. The East Mist communal country doesn't have an embassy in all and empire. In a certain mansion that was assigned to them at the last minute, even though it was already late at night, a certain young lady who was duped was enraged. Darn Darsos. This wasn't how he put it when he invited us. This is a scam, an insult to the entire country. The 14-year-old young lady is currently holding a tantrum in her room but it is a shame that the one she is facing is just her female retainer. Yes, they lie to us. But as a small country, what can we do? Do we make it public and refuse to swear loyalty to them? They would just treat it as an insult to the empire as well as the new emperor and start a full-out war against us. We would just be providing them a reason for war. Yes, this time, the East Mist communal country had no intention of becoming a subordinate state at all. Princess Rin was cheated here. Similarly, there were also a few small countries who refused to serve as a subordinate state but were forced or duped here. Based on the current circumstances, the rise of all and empire can no longer be halted. While the other countries pledging allegiance to them, if we insist otherwise, we would be viewed with hostility by everyone else. To protect their dignity as a superpower, the all and capital would have to launch a crusade against us. Furthermore, we just ended a battle against the beastmen, so we don't have the military power to fight such a war now. They are obviously trying to take this show for real then use their strength to suppress all oppositions. Ren grinds her teeth. Yes, they tricked us here because they have seen through all this. But, Big Sister Kelly, didn't you say that the mist bloodline doesn't yield? We should just go all out against them. The female wood elf is the court tutor who have served the mist royalty for almost 500 years, Galablian, shortened as Kelly. She has already mentored more than 20 kings and it is said that she is the teacher of the twin stars as well. She is a well-respected figure within the country and is deeply trusted by the royal family. That's why, if he is able to get the mist bloodline along with its long history to yield, Darsos and the All End Empire would earn even greater prestige. But, if we don't yield, he would use it as a reason to start a war. No matter how we deal with it, it is a deal he would win. That is why he can openly play these kind of schemes and tricks. Why? Aren't we all humans? Why are humans so much harder to deal with than the evil beastmen? Weariness shows on the face of the young princess. These days in Kajarsi City, facing those hypocrites who are hiding swords behind their words, she finds it is harder to cope with such diplomatic affairs than fighting in the battlefield. HMPH. It is because they are humans that dealing with them is so difficult. Your Highness, have you forgotten the reason for the downfall of the Mist Country, serving as the guardians of the borders of the human society for countless generations? What did we get in the end? The shameless betrayal by the human kingdoms whom we were protecting and being judged as heretics by the church. We were stabbed violently in the back. Never place your trust in those foolish and short-sighted human kings who break their promises, as well as the untrustworthy order gods. Although she is smiling faintly, in the words of the green-haired wolf elf is her distrust towards the entire human society and the order gods. Also, if you were to accept the agreement to serve as a subordinate state, your popularity within the country will fall drastically. Perhaps, this is one of the motive they have in mind. After all, the damage that the Mist bloodline had dealt to them in retaliation was not insignificant. Besides, your performance previously had probably put them on their guards. Perhaps, this is one of the reasons why they paid no regard to their standing to set up such a ploy on us. Ren immediately goes speechless, following which, a look of disbelief appears on her entire face. All these just because she performed excellently during the Beastmen invasion? Forcing the East Mist communal country and her to lower their head to become a subordinate state in order to suppress her reputation? Impossible. No, this possibility is very likely. Who asked you to have two famous fear-inspiring ancestors? Also, many talented people have appeared in the history of the Mist bloodline, so it is national that they would be wary of you. Furthermore. You look extremely alike with a twin prince. No, it is exactly the same. Whether it is another demon invasion or a knight of Definder, it is something that they won't be able to allow to happen. 
While speaking, their gazes suddenly lingers at the oil painting on the wall. Depicted in the painting is a battlefield. The battle was still going on and the young generals were currently advancing with the flag. There is a pair of twins. A young man holding his sword was currently slashing downwards from midair. Golden holy light radiates from him making him reminiscent of a god descending to the mortal world. Even in the most intense and despair-inducing battlefield, he carries a peaceful radiant smile, as though a bright future awaits him. Behind him, another young man with the exact same face was carrying a sword in his left hand and a staff on the right. Inferno from originating from hell is burning fervently on his right arm. In contrast to his twin brother, Fury could be found on his young face. A group of knights were charging forth from their back. What they faced was a sea of endless beastmen and demons. And by the corner of the painting, the flags of different human kingdoms can be vaguely seen, expressing the anger and dissatisfaction of the painter. That is an imitation of the famous painting of the East Mist communal country The Last Princes, Prince Roland and Prince Carwins, right? Big Sister Kelly. Are they really that incredible? If they were in the same situation as me now, will they fare much better? Ren is a little depressed. The guilt she feels from letting her ancestors down make her feel weak. Don't speak such disappointing words, you have already done very well. Kelly shakes her head. This kind of comparison is meaningless. Ren is Ren, the twin princes are the twin princes. If Carwins were in your position, he would probably only have wielded his sword and slaughter as his pleas. If so, wouldn't the situation simply worsen? That is to say, if Prince Roland was here, the situation would be vastly different? Ren discovers the hidden meaning behind Kelly's words and became even more depressed. Hearing these words, Kelly stuns for a moment before a look of nostalgia appears on her face. Roland ah, if it was him, he wouldn't have allowed the situation end up like this, to be put in a disadvantageous position. In the first place, that little fellow may seem very radiant and cheerful, but his veins are actually filled with black water. He would already be kind to not scheme against others, do would he let others plot against him? Carwins would definitely fall for it with a hundred percent probability. He would charge straight regardless of what stands in his way but somehow, he would always manage to charge out of these situations with brute force. Ren is quite curious. The big sister Kelly in front of her is a true elder of the Mist bloodline and a living library. However, she disliked talking about past affairs all along. This was a hard to come by opportunity, so she decided to make use of this opportunity to question her further. That, big sister Kelly, can you tell me about the affairs of the two princes? Are they really as powerful as the legends depict? Ren leans weakly on Kelly's body allowing the other party to freely braid her own hair and touch up on her makeup. This is already a daily habit she has cultivated through these two years. Thickening the eyebrow, outlining the eyeliner, trimming excess hair and using powder to conceal her overly pale skin. Under Kelly's dexterous hands, the distinction between a male and a female's face is further blurred. Under circumstances that just keeps worsening, what the East Miss communal country needs is a heroic knight similar to Holy Knight Roland in the legends to lead the country, and not an elegant lady of nobility who busies herself with social occasions. Although it may sound inconceivable, they are actually even stronger than how they were depicted in the legends. If it wasn't for the outbreak of war which robbed them of their time to mature, that generation would have belonged to those two. Hearing these words, Ren suddenly raises her head causing the makeup bin to stray off path on her face, messing up the makeup. Impossible, they were around my age when they died in battle. No, what big sister Kelly said must be the truth. As expected, I am useless. If only Prince Roland can make decisions in my place. Whoa. Kelly's chuckle beneath her hands surprised Kelly. Big sister Kelly, what are you laughing about? I am serious. No, Ren. It is just that there was someone who said the same words in the past. Who? Roland. He often said Aya, this is so troublesome, depriving me of my book reading time. If only Carwins can deal with them all, then I can spend all of my time reading books and slacking off. The legendary hero would actually have such a lazy side to him. Roland, who was viewed as the role model of the royalty and holy knights, would actually like to slack around. Prince Roland likes to read books? very much so. Regardless of whether it is about arts, music, literature, history, astronomy or geography, even if the messy alchemy and engineering, 
he likes them all very much. If he wasn't sent to the church to become a holy knight, if it wasn't for the sudden outbreak of war, he would have probably eventually become a well-known scholar. Wait, big sister Kelly, wasn't he 10 years old when he was sent to become a holy knight? He started to like reading from such a young age. The two princes were a year old when they started reading. If not, they wouldn't become renowned geniuses in the world. But, there is still another little story within it. Impressive. Little story? Un, normal boys tend to learn how to walk only after reaching a year old. Even if the missed bloodline allows their children to mature early, but just after just one month of his birth, Carwin's already learned how to walk and speak a few simple phrases. This is a feat of a super genius that would be recorded in history. What about Prince Roland? Yeah, when Carwin's was already walking, he was still crawling about. Carwin's could call Papa and Mama but he could only cry. However, a month after their birth, while we were still worried for Roland, Carwin's, abusing his strength, snatched his milk bottle and finally, he spoke. Spoke? Un, he first said to Carwin's hey, you breath, you might not be afraid of getting sliced up but I am. Can you calm down and be more professional, we are normal infants. You should learn how to cry, come, cry like your big brother. Wah-ah-ah. Come, raise the pitch a little, wah in. After realizing that Carwin's couldn't understand what he said and continued snatching his bottle, he shouted loudly for help hey hey hey. Can you all control this evil brat? He is already learning how to bully his older brother. HMPH, to dare to snatch my rations, I will pull you down with me. TL, just for note, sometimes Roland and the rest would address themselves as this old man slash woman when they are angry. In the text above, he said HMPH, to dare to snatch this old man's ration. This old man will pull you down with me. A month old child would actually know to hide his own talents? That is incredible. That's right. In these few centuries, I have taught several geniuses of the Mist royalty but I have never seen such a ridiculous child. The world thinks that Carwin's is a super genius but in reality, Roland was even more ridiculous. If it wasn't for him spending his effort on various academic domains, causing him to miss out on the golden period for training. He wouldn't be weaker than Carwin's in any case. Can you tell me a little more about Prince Roland? Staring at the face of the exhausted Ren, Kelly strokes her hair lightly. Just like how she did it when Ren was still a child, she lowers her head and lightly kisses the forehead of the young girl. Un, then, since you have been spent from being busy the entire day, let's treat it as a bedtime story. Roland, although he is smart, he isn't very reliable. There was once he happily dragged me to look at his new invention. He even said proudly look, this transparent thing would definitely sell well. I call it glass. Since it can earn us a lot of money, the life of our citizens will definitely improve. Glass was invented by Lord Roland. I remember that it existed 6,000 years ago though. Un, back then, he didn't know that. When I told him this, his depressed face really makes one's heart break. He even mumbled softly it's nothing, then I will invent the printing industry then. Printing technology? Isn't that the industry monopolized by the god of knowledge? Un, I also said that back then. Thus, he became even more depressed. However, the next day, he started to study astronomy and biology, what living being evolution theory. Although it seems obviously groundless, now that I think about it, it makes some sense. For example living beings aren't created by gods and they don't remain constant. They change and they evolve. National evolution is the way how living beings evolve. Living beings have a tendency to over-reproduce but living space and resources are limited. Thus, living beings have to fight in order to survive. The beings of the mortal world isn't created by the gods. Don't all life forms originate from the origin of order and the chaos abyss? Isn't this obviously a lie? Un, but he didn't get depressed over this. Very quickly, he found new toys. He has always been like this, never knowing what being discouraged and giving up was. Even at the start of the war, he quickly matured from a rookie into a true war god. If only the enemies we face didn't outnumber us by more than a hundred times. Under the accumulation of rage and exhaustion, very quickly, as words flew by, Ren fell into the realm of dreams. Looking at the young lady stripped of her armor, Kelly fell into deep thoughts. That armor is very elegant, 
looking like a heavy mithril plate mail on the exterior. In reality, it is only a soft armor painted with a layer of gold alloy. It is even lighter than leather armor. It is impossible for talents to be born from the mist bloodline for every generation. Ren isn't some genius expert. In fact, she isn't even a qualified warrior. Having the fighting power of an iron rank primary stage at 14 years old, there isn't much difference between her and normal civilians. In that 1000 kilometers charge, she was only in charge of holding the flags and shouting the war cry. While trembling in fear, she led the army to build up her reputation. If she were to really meet with an opponent, any beast men would have been able to easily kill her in an instant. However, it is a pity that the East Mist communal country is currently plagued with internal and external problems. It is indeed a period which they require a hero like Princess Knight. Ren has sacrificed a lot but if the circumstances were to be allowed to develop on as it is, she would have to continue to be sacrificed even if very possibly, she would receive no returns. Perhaps, what would await her is a bad reputation and the incomprehension of her citizen. Sigh, maybe what Ren said makes sense. This job is really too tough for her to bear. Roland, where are you? Kelly lightly strokes the knife by her waist. On the hilt of the dagger, two giant dragons intertwines with one another and of the two pearls placed on them, one was radiating white light while the other was radiating black light. This is the light of life, a secret art passed down in the royalty of many countries. When a member of a royalty is born, a drop of blood would be taken from them to hold the ritual. Then, this pearl would become their light of life. If the light is extinguished, it means that the person is dead. This can also be used to prevent others from faking the identity of members of royalty. The two pearls on this decorative knife is the light of life of the twins, Roland and Carwins. Carwins as light of life is becoming darker and darker. It seems that he has fallen entirely to the chaos. But Roland. The situation with Roland's light of life is extremely bizarre. It lights up for a moment and extinguishes in the next, white for an instant and black in the next, changing multiple times frequently. A hundred years ago, the darkness even exceeded that of Carwin's and not too long ago, it was extinguished suddenly. Then, two months later, it lit up once again, turning white. If the reaction of this light of life depicts his actual condition and that Roland is still roaming on this world. He must be leading a very exciting life. Somehow, the knife slightly shudders, as though summoned by something. Kelly instinctively stands up and looking towards the direction of the pull of the knife, she discovers the silhouette of a person beneath the tree. Roland. However, when she focused her sight, she realized that it was only a willow tree dancing along with the wind. Shaking her head, Kelly shuts the window. Hey, looks like I am just like Ren desiring a reliable shoulder to lean on. However, she didn't notice that by the corner, beneath the window, a figure wearing a silver mask was currently grinding his teeth in anger. Darso's, to actually dare set your sights on the mist country, I will make sure that your fate will be even worse than that in history. Don't ask me how the pearl managed to radiate black light. It just does. Chapter 82 the revival of the mist without doubt, the all and empire is a powerful country. Their royal family's white wolf royal guards is indisputably an elite deer three light cavalry. The combined charge of three of these armies of silver rank mounted troops is unstoppable. All right, this isn't the underground world where gold rank are treated as pawns. At the very least, the military of the smaller countries that they are bordered with are unable withstand their charge. Compared to races blessed with longevity, a human's individual fighting prowess is definitely a shortcoming. However, humans are a race that depend heavily on tools and external items to achieve victory. The White Wolf Royal Guards can only reach silver rank when coupled with their mounts and equipment. The so-called large countries refers to those who possess an advantage in agriculture, manufacturing, alchemy, magic, breeding livestock and the grooming of talents. That's why they are able to equip and sustain a stronger army and military power. TL, the word, large countries, in Chinese have the idea of them being powerful as well. So, you all can safely assume the large countries I am talking about to not just be large in term of land size. For example, the armor of the White Wolf Guards is an alloy of Missler Mithril. Not mentioning the blueprint for the armor of their light cavalry. Even the basic materials required for the alloy itself is a class 1 secret of the Alland Empire. The Missler Savage Dragon Lance, 
Savage Javelin and Savage Sword that they specially created are all high quality alchemy products. As for their Marlot horses, it is a top quality war horse that they carefully crossbred for many generations. It is said that this type of war horse feed on meat. It is because of such luxurious equipment that a bronze rank knight is forcefully pulled to the strength of a silver rank human. Coupling it with an overwhelming advantage in quantity and strategy, their fighting power would be one to reckon with. Not only unique troops are like that, all human soldiers are reliant on equipment. For example, a former farmer who undergo a year of basic soldier training, after giving him a dragon lance, he would be a tier 1 basic spearman. If he were to undergo two year of shooting training, with a magic crossbow, he would be a tier 1 intermediate crossbowman. If they undergo 5 years of strict training and equips full heavy plate mail with alchemy medicine that increases one's strength, then they would be a tier 2 basic armored berserker. On the other hand, if they started grooming a griffin from young, then after it matures to the point that it could be ridden on, a tier 3 griffin rider would be born. Of course, basically, only nobles who can afford the feed for griffins will be able to assume such an expensive job. Of course, due to being too reliant on external tools, it is unavoidable that they would be physically weak. Once dismounted, the White Wolf Guards are only bronze rank foot soldiers. They would then be heavily dependent on cooperation and formations. Humans are quite well known for their military art and using the combination of different soldiers to cover for the weakness of another is a lesson that all commanders must undergo. The inheritance and innovation of technology and culture cause the continuous emergence of new types of soldiers and new equipment. Not to mention, the growth rate of humans surpasses that of the other races and tribes so they had never feared a battle of attrition. This also the primary reason why the short-lived humans who don't have any race talents are able to claim supremacy in this world. For example, the elves are indeed strong. It is perfectly common for adult elves to be at silver rank. However, it takes 200 years for them to mature. That is enough for the birth of four to five generations of humans. Furthermore, the odd one of the elves, the dark elves, Despite being the only one with strong reproductive abilities, they have the most intense internal conflict of all. However, admittedly, in a damned place like the underground world, the only way one can attain sufficient resources is through cruel elimination of adversaries. Thus, in the eyes of other races, the human race only have one advantage, strong reproductive abilities. But, this advantage is sufficient by itself. Indeed. Our fake gold ranks might not be able to compete against the real gold ranks of your elf race. But, it wouldn't be a loss even if I had to exchange 10 of mine for one of yours. There are people to replace me even after I'm dead as long there are sufficient equipment. By 10 years, my army would have recovered. But, you elves have to wait 200 years for a new generation to mature. Are you all sure you can compete with us? Also, as long as the population is large enough, top class talents would naturally appear. At the very least, every top tier empire would have at least a few semi-god old geezers. However, the human kingdoms aren't infallible. In the invasion by the underground alliance in the future, against absolute power coupled with military tactics that aren't inferior to them, the human kingdoms also tasted the pain of lacking top tier fighting power. Thus, the need for stronger soldiers stimulated their advancement, they welcomed another period of rapid growth of engineering, alchemy and magic. That bizarre tier 5 soldier, Magic Machinery Dragon, is the product of the new Magic Machinery Study and Magic Formation Study. Alright, let's stop talking about the future that brings migraine to one. Just the present itself is causing me a headache. A large tree attracts wind. In history, the All End Empire accurately displayed the meaning of this phrase to actual actions. Regardless of whether it is the invading underground alliance or the undead calamity, they decisively chose them as their primary target. It will be cool under the shade of a large tree? No, following the international rules, under the orders of the sovereign state, the subordinate states must go on to the battlefield as well. Furthermore, they would come under the command of the sovereign state so it is almost certain that they would be forced to serve as cannon fodder. When I start to think about the cruel wars that would happen in the future, the smaller a country is, the less cards they have on their hand, the easier it is for them to be crushed. This is also why I won't sit idly by and watch as the East Mist communal country to becomes the subordinate state of the All-End Empire. However, just like what I have heard previously, 
If we were to reject them directly, it would probably cause a war. Both endings are equally bad, so it would be really difficult to choose between the two. Since it is hard to choose, then we might as well not choose. We should try to look for ways to turn it into a farce. As long as the subordinate states alliance fails and the plan is postponed for a few years, the situation would change completely. Of course, if I do not exact vengeance against them, I won't be able to take it lying. Although I said these words, I still have no idea how I should strike. Even in the case of deflecting a thousand points of strength with one point of strength, one would require at least one point of strength. Compared to a gigantic organization like the All and Empire, the strength in my hands might not even tally up to half a point. As it is my first time here, everything must be started from scratch. I don't have sufficient intelligence and network, so there is no way I can come up with a reliable action plan. However, since I still have three months before the inauguration ceremony, I should make getting into their top echelons and collecting information as my primary objective. This is also the reason why I am at the entrance of this dirty and smelly underground sewage now. It is really too smelly. Even if we have to complete a mission to please that count, but there isn't a need to accept such a mission right? The ex-queen of Banshees and current queen of slimes pinches her nose as she complains with a look of resentment on her face. Look, it's your brethren. I pointed at the pungent sewage culvert. Over there, a mud slime is currently struggling, its body filled with fetid filth. After glancing for a brief moment, disgust overwhelms her. Harlois immediately turns into a black cat and pounces over. I am the noble queen of Banshees, the omniscient one of the secrets of magic not some filthy slime. First claw second by third tail whip, she is quite well versed in cat martial art. However, when used by this black cat, rather than saying it is an attack, one might as well say it is an attempt to act cute. However, I didn't ignore it as I usually do. This is because Harlois's biting attacks have some threat to them now. Frozen air, a kind of deadly cold air that is without sound or presence. It can be enchanted on one's physical body and weapon as well as paired together with ice magic as an attack. Those who are touched by the frozen air will have all movements slowed by 1% and suffer 1 point of ice damage per second. This debuff can be stacked. If the target's movement speed is reduced by more than 20%, a frozen effect will be inflicted. Many negative status will be inflicted such as the freezing of one's thought. If the target's movement speed is reduced by more than 50%, then there is a chance that the target might die at any moment due to massive loss of heat. From a certain sense, a mage's magic pet is also a part of himself. The touch of ghoul, touch of lich and various other magic spells that require mages to be in close proximity to the target to cast can be released through their magic pets. However, I never thought that the one to benefit the greatest from the passive ability frozen air would be Harl Ois. As a cat or a bat, she is a small target and the interval between her attacks are short. She is stealthy, making her suited for assaults. Furthermore, the minuscule damage that one incurs from her claws easily causes the other party to neglect her attacks. If she were to stack a few dozen layers of frozen air, then the person would probably not be that far off from death. Though, in the face of someone who knows about it beforehand, it becomes meaningless. With a light step, a spin and a pinch. I managed to grab hold of the cat's biggest weakness, the back of their neck. After turning two rounds, what I received is a dead cat who is shooting gold stars from her eyes. HMPH, you are still too young to fight with me. I laugh gleefully. My level has been stuck for quite a period of time due to the experience penalty which is getting more ridiculous. Also, I wasn't willing to invest my valuable skill points into that darned ice system. However, along the way. I had been revising on my holy light and power of law, causing my battle power to soar. But, what that grew even more rapidly was surprisingly, my swordsmanship and martial arts. This should have been the main area of study for warriors. After all, they lack the augmentation of supernatural abilities. However, for me, studying swordsmanship is like trying to recall my past memories so there's no need for me to spend too much effort to learn it. This twist and step may seem simple, but it is actually a footwork with profound meaning. Coupled together with my profound swordsmanship, every attack is clean and thorough, making me look extremely cool. If I were to display this outside, 
it would definitely stir the praises of experts and the screams of beautiful ladies. How can I be so cool? Roland, can you be even more ridiculous? Other people are fighting and yet you are playing with your cat. Momo's sword was quick like the wind. At this moment, she is currently chasing a group of underground rats, slashing furiously at them. Judging from how their entire body is dyed red, they must have assaulted a group of passers-by not long ago. Fine, the mad dog may look decent, so reluctantly, she could be considered a beauty. However, the dark elf's sense of aesthetics cannot be trusted. Thus, I shot my gaze towards Gross, Lord Oracle. Even if you are the one who carries out the will of my lord, but if you such inappropriate behavior will bring shame to my lord, please fight seriously. The wild elf crows is brandishing a gigantic wooden vine staff which is even taller than her. Lightning flashes time and time again in the pitch black underground tunnel and every flash is accompanied by a scream of agony. Our group lacks firepower and due to the apparent fact that we have an excess of law jobs. She took on the role of a damage dealer as a storm druid. The lightning spell can be cast even in the underground. Although its might is obviously weaker than how it should be, the strength is still enough to overturn the common sense of normal druids, proving that she has astonishing talent and potential in the control of lightning. Crows. to gender, crows race, wild elf job, LV60 druid LV12 storm druid LV20 judgment or LV3 storm judgmenter. Crows' self-created legend job, total LV-95, combined LV-83 soul imprint, the Storm Envoy fighting power evaluation, legend priestess system evaluation, she is a big thigh worth lying on, not to mention it is a beautiful one. As for that gender Crows, as this joke is too old, I won't talk more about it. Right, the spring of drowned men will be added into the Gakupin recently so try your best to draw it so as to please this beauty. TL, big thigh, greater than it is a Chinese web phrase, just imagine in a rebounds per game, a newbie hugging the leg of a veteran while the veteran fights monsters. Although a letter that I personally wrote and Diana's testimony is sufficient to convince her that I am Wumian's oracle, somehow, she seems to always bring up strict requests of me such as you can't do that you must discipline yourself properly, slacking around every day really damages my lord's reputation putting it as though I soiled the reputation of her god. HMPH, about soiling Wumians's reputation, did you think that I was very reliable before? Alright, saying words that insult a priestess's true god is equal to throwing in a white glove to engage her in a duel to the death, there's no way I would say these words to her face. Even though she couldn't exactly be considered a beautiful lady, judging from how everyone was staring at me angrily, it seems like I have accidentally incurred the wrath of the crowd. I better keep myself in check. So, where exactly is that jade? Something is amiss with this mission. Despite possessing solid authority and numerous experts under his command, he tasked us, outsiders, to look for his family heirloom jade that he lost. This lantern used to guide our path is obviously a type of necromancy magic, more like searching for souls and corpses. Hee <laughs> hee. Looks like I have started to see the truth of this matter. After biting on my finger with all her might as revenge, Harlois jumps on my shoulder. Sitting on higher ground allows her to distance herself from the smell of those putrid filth. I also found it odd that the Count would hand us a lantern filled with magic, saying that we would find the jade by following its guide. However, from my senses, it is obviously a necromancy magic that is guided by flesh and blood. It is a necromancy magic that tracks the missing limbs or the master of the sample of flesh and blood used in the ritual. Ignoring the fact that a human count has a necromancer under his command, could the jade that we have to find a part of someone's body? Alright, it is right in front. After everyone are done clearing the battlefield, I walk over with the lantern in my hand. In the end, I stop in front of a giant bot left behind by the ratman. Looking at how the lantern is flickering at rapid intervals, it seems that the jade we are looking for is in this pot. Thus, I casually lift the ladle inside and scoop up the contents inside a few times. The first few times, I manage to scoop up human fingers and ears. It seems that this really is a miscellaneous soup from the ratman. But soon afterwards, I manage to scoop up my objective, the jade. Oh. So the jade refers to eggs. Alright, the mad dog explained very straightforwardly. In front me is a part of the male reproductive organ, 
more commonly known as eggs. It is already cooked very thoroughly and looks all right. I am so disgusted that I find myself unable to continue describing it. Hey, there is only one truth. The unlucky count must have been philandering outside, inciting his wife to bring the knife down on him fiercely. Afterwards, she threw his eggs into the underground sewage. He he, she sure is vicious, I feel a bit of an urge to meet that wife of the count. Somehow, after hearing Harloy's ill-intentioned conjecture, looking at her gaze which was filled with malice, I felt a chill down my spine. No, it isn't a wound from a knife but rather, it seems to have been crushed. Judging from the wounds, there probably isn't any culprit in this case. I suspect that the fat count might have accidentally put his eggs between the toilet bowl cover and the toilet bowl and sat down. Kaka, and it fell into the underground sewage. There is an actual case on the web, look, that count is obese and movement isn't very convenient for him. Also. The sides of the metal toilet bowl is quite sharp. Thus, when pressure is applied, pochi, it is immediately ripped apart. Should I say as expected of a judge who is a professional at analyzing cases? In the end, Crows even clapped her hands together to emulate the action of a pressure acting downwards while making sounds like kaka, pochi. But why are you all covering your lower body? Is there is a mistake in my conjecture? No. It is just that everyone feels as though their eggs are being pulled, it hurts a little. All right, without doubt, the action of these men covering their lower body is the instinctive ability to empathize with another man. However, this result that left people speechless has determined that this day would be a farce that would leave us mentally and physically tired. Why can't we meet a slightly more normal person? It is enough for our Ben to be unreliable, but now, even our client has to be unreliable as well? I question the blue sky and as expected, there is no reply. Do we have to bring it back? Disgusting, Momo doesn't want to touch it. He probably wants the help of a priest to reattach it, otherwise he wouldn't have spent money to hire us. Who wants to take it? Apparently, no one wants to touch a thing like this. Just as we were trying to push the responsibility to the one another, boom a loud explosion caused the entire underground tunnel to tremble. The Ratman army has arrived. They have always been a life form with strong desire for vengeance. Clint quietly takes a step forward. His voice had a rare tinge of pride in it. It seems that the traps that he laid by himself has worked. But instead of reassuring me, cold sweat starts appearing on my head. Looking at the rubble that dropped from the ceiling, this fellow seems to have used too much gunpowder. Clint, you didn't set up explosives going by the standards of the underground world right? This is a man-made tunnel, there is no way it would be as sturdy as the rock walls of the underground world. How many did you bury? All right, there is no need to question him further. From Clint's action of turning around to flee, it clearly says what is going to happen afterwards. Boom. Boom. A series of explosions caused the entire underground sewage to crumble. This clearly shows that not only did he bury explosives, he buried a ton of them. Damn it. Can't you all be more normal? While escaping with all my might, I thought about Crows who was explaining her conjecture calmly and the Prince of Explosions. I immediately regretted coming up with the name Absolute Gentleman Alliance. Crows whose gender is Gross. The mysterious Prince Clint who hides his face and plays with explosives. Bay Ifeng. Un. There is absolutely no need for any description. Bay Ifeng itself is the best adjective for perverts. Cassio, who is getting closer with Bay Ifeng, although he seems normal at the moment. Being friendly with Bai Feng is a big problem by itself. The mad dog who is into Shodas. The dark elves who seek the path of holy light and law. Two gays, the two. We are not gays, we just love crows. There really isn't a normal person here. I have decided, if I manage to escape safely from here, I will go out and look for two normal teammates. You forgot yourself, you insane old monster. Un, thank you for your reminder. The old granny who pretends to be young. Didn't I forbid you from calling me that? I will bite you, I really will. You already bit me, you bastard. I forbid you from stacking frozen air on me. Apologize. Absolutely not. Then need my attacks. Do you think you are the only one who can stack frozen air to lower one's movement speed? Watch me. When everyone escaped from the underground sewage. They discovered that not too far from the entrance of the sewage, a man and a cat is currently brawling intensely. While proceeding forward with the speed of a turtle, 
they tried their hardest to slow the other down. The entire underground sewage was already trembling, on the verge of collapsing at any moment now. Rowland, stop playing with the cat at such a time. I am not playing with the cat. We are fighting. All right, before everyone had the time to be surprised over the fact that the little black cat could actually speak. The underground sewage finally collapsed. Even in the instant when the rubble came crashing down, the sound of the arguments between the two could still be heard. Look, thanks to you, old granny. No milk for you tomorrow. HMPH, you would need to have a tomorrow for that. To be able to pull you down with me, my life was worthwhile. Even after I fall into hell, I would wake up laughing. Boom. When innumerable rocks come crashing down and everything is reduced to ruins, Everyone was flabbergasted. What kind of person was he, to sacrifice his life for an argument with a little cat? Ha, I almost died. Don't worry, disasters live for a thousand years. Given your ability to bring about catastrophes, you would even survive the end of the world. Look at my claw of the meow god. Alright, looks like I spoke too early. A head pops up from the rubble. Despite being stuck there. He was still using his teeth to fight with his cat while insulting each other. But obviously, being stuck in the rubble, he is unable to defeat the cat. As scratches start to pile up on his face, without any hesitation, he surrenders and begs for forgiveness. Three times the portion of milk tomorrow. Milk bath, the highest quality one. Meow wants her that. Deal. Alright, looking at the man and cat who quickly came to an agreement. Let's not elaborate on what emotions they were showing on their face when they dug out their leader. They were all considering whether they should retreat from the band before they are dragged to their deaths by this living treasure. But, unexpectedly, they swiftly realized that the team leader Rawl and was still holding that disgusting ladle in his hands. You can't be thinking of going to claim the reward right? After it is cooked and crushed, it is already entirely ruined. Just throw it away. Yeah? A gold rank priest may not be able to revive it even if you were to return it back. The count will just end up angered by the embarrassment. I shook my head. I already understood clearly why the count would task this to an external mercenary band like us. Diana and Crows, follow me to complete the mission. This fellow handed us this mission despite having underlings of his own. He obviously intend to dispose of us after using us. Great, after he turns his back on us. We will take him down and threaten him with this toy. This way, we can manipulate him and his network. Your plan sounds okay, but if that ladle touches me, I will make sure you go down with me. I didn't reply to Harloise's complaint. At this moment, I was surprised by the system notice. Congratulations, you have activated the epic mission, the revival of the mist. A few minutes ago, Kelly and Ren was astonished after opening a thick letter. The blueprint of the full armor of the Aurora Knight? The blueprint of the royal family's heavy infantry avalanche guardian? The training manual for training as the hounds. In the mix is more than 30 types of powerful soldier types that were lost, information regarding their jobs, training methods and equipment blueprint. All these are the pride of the powerful menaced country and the mist bloodline. But they were destroyed in the battle and defined her along with the city. Could this really be the inheritance that we have lost? Did someone from East Mist who escaped to All and Capital keep all these? No, they are top tier secrets. The number of people people who knew all these back then were in the single digits. Besides, look at the blueprint for this armor. We have it as well, but it is slightly different. Inconceivable. With such a change, the defense ability would be increased by at least 20%. It is actually an improved version. Who is it, to be able to further refine such a perfect design? Also, the ink for the blueprint has yet to dry yet. It is probably written not too long ago. Just a small present, please accept it. I will be visiting you all soon. Rowland who is Rowland? It doesn't matter who he is, there is hope for the East Mist communal country. As long as we take these back, give it 10 years. We would be able to rise up again as a powerful country in the north. Not mentioning the two overjoyed ladies, at this moment, my head was hurting from the mission that was suddenly triggered. I really didn't expect a whim of mine to cause such a big trouble for me. Congratulations, you have activated the epic mission, the revival of the mist. Quest objective, remove the threat of the East Mist communal country from being annexed as a subordinate state. Bring back the country of winter wolves in the far north. In the face of the true king of winter wolves, Darso's means nothing at all. 
quest rewards, Roland's sacred sword will be upgraded into a god equipment. The clue to the god equipment holy thorned crown. I know that you have been wanting to find this guardian equipment of your country. Quest failure penalty, turned into a female. I am serious, very serious. If you can't protect your country this time, you might as well become a girl. TL, the phrase for guardian equipment is, which means an extremely powerful weapon used to stabilize the country slash deter enemies. My head hurts, where did the fellow Carwins throw the holy thorned crown to? Not even saying a word about it, now I have to look for it myself. Although I was complaining. The smile on my face probably didn't escape the notice of anyone. This time, I definitely will not fail. Chapter 83, Double Swords Name, Age, Job, Expertise, Goal, Aaron, 16, Iron Rank Warrior. My swordsmanship isn't bad. I want to earn money and become a hero that saves the world. Looking at the foolishly smiling young fellow in front of me. I nod my head in response to his words. That plain looking tan young man reminds me of the Adam of the past. Next. 16 year old iron rank, why are you even still training? Can you reach gold rank within 3 years? We aren't a group of nannies, you better look for a rookie party to grind your way up. Cabin, around 30 plus I guess, silver rank shaman. My goal is to earn enough money to buy the fire dragon circus. Dixu, 40 plus. I am his big brother and a proud warrior. My goal is to be a good big brother. I am the big brother. Dixu, you fool who can't even count properly. We were born together, how can you be 10 years older than me? Okay, this is a rarely seen ogre shaman. It is said that they were once the pillar propping up a circus. After the circus disbanded, they came out to work as mercenaries for a living, hoping to earn enough money to bring back the circus. I am the elder brother. I am. Don't think that I would be afraid of you just because you can do a few light tricks with your hands. I am strong, you know. Fine, then let's play scissors paper stone. The one who wins will be the elder brother. Fine, one, two, three. Ha, stone. Paper, I won. I am the elder brother. Kevin, you are slow. That is not counted. Again, or I will beat you up. Come on then, today I will show you the dignity of an elder brother. You fool who can't even count to nine. But now, this rare double-headed ogre Kevin and Dixu is actually brawling to determine which head is the elder brother. While beating each other up, they were both screaming in pain. It is just that it is hard to tell whether they were feeling pain from beating up the other or from getting beaten up. I nod my head solemnly. This double-headed ogre is indeed quite powerful being naturally talented in magic and martial arts from birth. Their combined fighting power definitely mashes up to the strength of a gold rank human. Even more importantly, different from the rookie just now, they would contribute to our fighting power as soon as they join our team. Next. However, what I lack now is not fighting power but normal people. We already have enough perverts and weirdos in our band. If we were to add in a person whose left and right is brawling with one another, we would be going down the road of making our opponents laugh to their death. That day, after realizing that the gentleman alliance is lacking in decency and common sense, considering the need to pull up the bottom limit of our decency, I decided to recruit two normal people. Of course, another one of the reason is that in this human country, there were too many foreign races in the gentleman alliance. If we use a non-human as a front to communicate with our clients, it would be hard to prevent others from overthinking things. Thus, even if it is just for show, I decided to recruit a few human mercenaries. Of course, it would be best if they were knowledgeable about this city. Even if they can't be of help, they would be useful as a cover. The situation of our band now, a bunch of foreign races moving together, is too striking. In comparison, it would be much better if it was a group of human mercenaries with a few foreign races in its mix. Thus, so as to not delay the matter, I immediately got down to it. Thus, I set up a stand in front of the mercenary guild early in the morning to recruit people. With a friendly sponsor from the count with broken eggs, the starting salary is one that makes eyes widen. However, it is a pity that as a foreigner, my background and identity couldn't be checked. Furthermore, with the tense atmosphere in the city due to the inauguration ceremony, the experienced mercenaries are all lying in wait to judge the situation. Those who responded to the recruitment are either rookies or oddities that other bands are unwilling to accept. Looking at Kevin and Dixie who were still brawling with each other, 
I shake my head helplessly. I start to pack up my stand to leave. It looks like I have wasted an entire morning today. However, passing by the mission board, I stopped. A rank reward mission, look for the true culprit who destroyed the Northwest Underground Sewage in Pearl District. Dead or alive, 200,000 gold coins will be awarded. This is really quite a significant sum. A knee rank reward mission can make a small mercenary band without any rank to climb several ranks at one go. 200,000 gold coin is sufficient for one to buy a luxurious mansion in the Pearl District where land is worth gold itself. It seems like the occurrence of the mysterious vandalism just before the inauguration ceremony has struck the nerves of the officials of All and Empire. I hesitated for a moment, considering that I have earned quite a sum recently. I am not in urgent need of money. It would feel great to betray the explosion maniac who is getting more and more dangerous in exchange for the reward money. But, considering that it would most probably end up implicating me as well, I can only regretfully give up on this opportunity to thoroughly rid me of a trouble. Yesterday, after communicating with the Count with broken eggs, it was as I expected. The reason why he seeked foreign faces to settle his tasks is so that he could get rid of them afterwards. When he saw that there were only three of us and that two were women, he was prepared to expose his true intentions but Diana immediately used her great sense splitting strike to chop up a dozen of his men while crows destroyed the roof and everything else remaining. Then, I took at the devil contract. That fat count was still quite knowledgeable at identifying objects. When he saw Holy Knight expertly changing the terms of the evil contract using the devil language, he was so surprised that his jaws almost dropped off, as though he had seen an angel and devil dancing together. What happens afterwards was even more simple. After the contract was signed, Seeing how he was scared out of his wits and considering the need to maintain a long-term relationship with him, it wouldn't be wise to push him too far. He might retaliate with all he got without any consideration about the cost if forced to a corner. Thus, I didn't come up with any unreasonable demands. I only extorted a large sum of money from him a luxurious mansion to serve as our temporary base and made him a right to provide us with intelligence. Of course, devil contracts mainly work by raising the stake bit by bit, pulling people bit by bit up the hook. If we were to play big from the very start, the tasty piece of flesh would be frightened away. I am still quite satisfied with our mansion, which is in the Pearl District. It doesn't feel right to be living in a hostel all the time. The mansion might be a little old but the renovations and the garden could still be considered high class. Now, our entire band is currently cleaning up our temporary base and as the human leader of the band, I made use of the opportunity to sneak out to recruit personnel. If it's just me doing the recruiting, it won't be that be so striking. Without those decency lacking fellows pulling me back, I should be able to get some normal people on the band. Un. I definitely did not do it to avoid the responsibility of cleaning up, finding excuses to slack off. Is it something an upright holy knight like me will do? Looks like without any reputation, it would be hard for us to recruit decent people. Why don't we try the legendary technique of transcenders, recruiting the future heroes who still aren't faring well? Un, it is about time for that plot to happen, they should be born already. Sigh, when I received the walk through. I thought that I could get many powerful little brothers under my command. But, I didn't expect that even their ancestors were still in their sperm and egg form. At that moment, I add, this is even more depressing than when I put in so much effort to create glass back then, only to realize that the toy has been long created. Hey, digging talents from all and empire, I don't feel any guilt at all. Thinking about how cool I would be, leading a bunch of epic heroes in the future. I couldn't help but daydream. I still remember that the Rain Swallow Sword and Master of Magic Machinery are still in the Island capital. If so, should I look for them tomorrow? Un, I should first head to the Count with Broken Eggs to obtain some intelligence first. Alright, the recruitment mission is done. So, where should I head to spend my time next? Hey hey, this big brother here. You haven't told us whether you will be recruiting us. We need money to revive the circus. We will listen obediently to you. I was looking at the bounty list, thinking about how long it would take for the cleaning to conclude and where I should go to waste my time when the sight in front of me turns dark suddenly. Then, two ugly faces suddenly appear in front of me, their bad breath hitting me squarely in my face. Ghosts. Alright, 
what is faster than my scream is my reflex action. Before I came to, my fist has already been struck out. Based on the sensation on my hand, it feels like I hit something physical. He hit him. He actually made a move against them. Ha! Huh. To actually dare to taunt this silly ogre who doesn't distinguish between allies and enemies, looks like there's a show to watch. 3 to 1 for the man dead, 1 tame for the man getting heavily injured. That pitiful fire dragon circus. They were already troubled by death due to bad management and now, their members are going to hurt someone again. This time, no one is able to help them anymore. The shouts of the onlookers proves that my judgment is correct. From my perspective, Kevin and Dixie's prowess is already quite decent, so comparatively, to normal mercenaries, their strength would be at a shocking level. However, the reason why no one dared to hire them is because ogres are easily enraged and would go into berserk state. Once they start fighting, it is easy for them to go into a state where they wouldn't be able to distinguish between allies and enemies. I'm sorry, but you appear too suddenly. It was an accident. I smile sheepishly as I retrieve my hand from Kevin and Dixie's stomach. Some kind-hearted people were already shouting warnings at me. Lad, escape quickly. Why bother reasoning with ogres? Just half a month ago, he severely wounded a berserker from the southern lands. Hurry up. You actually dare to hit Kevin. Blood red veins appear in the four eyes of the three meter tall double headed ogre. Then, they start to roll outwards showing the whites of their eyes. Saliva starts to flow freely from their mouth, and they were no longer able to complete their sentence. It is a complete berserk state. Everyone, let's face him together, otherwise we will all die here. Alright, looking at this sight, there were already veterans who roared furiously and charged forward. Complete berserk state is the ace, race talent, of beast men, berserkers, and ogres. In exchange of their rationality, they burn through their life force for terrifying strength. Perhaps, they would die of exhaustion if they were treated in time after their berserk ends, but until then, they would be a fearless killing machine. Calvin and Dixie's combined fighting prowess is gold rank, so they would be minimally be of the strength of a legend rank after complete berserk. The judgment of the veterans were accurate. If the both of them weren't killed in time, everyone in their surroundings would probably die, but the next moment, the four eyes of the salivating ogre turn completely white. Then, their heads suddenly slant and they crash to the ground, their gigantic body raising a cloud of dust. How is this possible? It isn't complete berserk but rather, they were knocked out from a blow of this young man. Disbelief can be seen on the face of the strongest mercenary of the group who were charging towards the ogre. He really found it hard to accept such a reality. He was once partners with Kevin and Dixu and he knows how tough that berserker and shaman ogre are physically. In fact, he has even seen the berserk state Kevin and Dixu tearing a war elephant apart but now, they were knocked out by a single blow. After the dust settles, the cheerful smiling young man has already disappeared. At the same time, I who accidentally used my full strength in the punch, made use of the chaos to escape. The basic strength of a normal ogre is 16 points and as a berserker, Kevin and Dixie should have at least 18 points. It is indeed quite fearsome compared to the 10 points of an average human. However, when placed in comparison with one who have exceeded the limits of mortals, 20 points, there is a difference in terms of quality between the two. Furthermore, I accidentally used a strength exertion technique that I have been practicing recently. This is also the main reason why they fell in one blow. Why did I have to escape? Darn it, even if I have to make a reputation for myself, but this kind of striking reputation is really unbearable. If I don't escape, I wouldn't be able to escape the title of Ogre Knight or some similar nicknames. I still roughly get the mercenary industry for veterans. Their titles often spread further than their real name. Furthermore, this title is often related to how they made their name for the first time, it would be hard to change it after it is fixed. It would be great if it was some elegant title like Dragon Slayer. But, imagine Professional Cobalt Slayer, the destroyer of gnomes and the ejector of dogs kind of titles, you wouldn't be able to raise your head for the rest of your life. As for Holy Knight who is stronger than ogres and ogre Holy Knight kind of bizarre titles. Given my luck stat, it is definitely possible that I would receive such titles. Thus, it would be best for me to escape as far as possible. Of course, before I left, I conveniently completed one of my objective. Holding the bounty in hand, 
I found a way to spend my time before the cleaning ends. Be Rank Bounty, Blood Hand Brotherhood Band, an organization comprising pickpockets and assassins. Dead or alive, 100 gold will be awarded for normal members, a minimum of 1,000 for their top brass and 50,000 gold for the head of the band, Blood Hand Jim. If the task is completed before the inauguration ceremony, the bounty will be doubled. Although the reward is much less than the A-Class quest, what I require now is intelligence and a target to train with. When it comes to intelligence, who could compare with the thief bands who deal in intelligence? Very quickly, from the count with broken eggs, I received basic intelligence on the Blood Hand Brotherhood band. A lower mid-tier thief band with less than 200 members. They had just carried out a big operation, stealing the tributes that a certain country was going to present to the emperor thus causing a bounty to be placed on them. It is said that their old den is by the harbor. 200 people? Let's try to complete it before dinner. Un, I will bring back intelligence with me so that no one can say that I am slacking off. Dash 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 Roland.Mist Strength, 20 Agility, 19 Stamina, 20 Intelligence, 29 Will, 29 Charm, 19 Race Talent, War Angel Form, Sinful Devil God Form, Sword of Order. Titan Body LV22 Order Knight LV22 Chaos Witch King In reality, ever since my revival, while being delighted over my high starting point, I have been thinking about what kind of training route I should walk on. Not talking about ice magic and necromancy first, as an experienced holy knight, I am still quite confident in my close combat abilities. However, for this balanced and powerful physical body, if I were to choose the route of heavy armor and dual blade, then my 19 points in agility would be wasted. But, if I were to wear light armor and choose the route of an agile warrior, then it would be a waste of my 20 points strength which surpasses the limits of mortals. But, what surprises me the most is that despite my primary job being Order Knight, I didn't have a main stat. My overall fighting power could be increased with the rise of any one of my stats. Thus, I hesitated. Don't tell me I would have to walk the route of dual blades? Or should I learn from barbarians, carrying a heavy weapon in each of my hand? But, that would be starting anew. Changing one's fighting style isn't an easy task. However, a small unexpected event made me make up my determination. Frozen air the treacherous buff that can be enchanted on the blade of one's weapon, causing one's opponent to unknowingly fall into a desperate situation. Initially. I planned to use the Radiant Holy Light to cover the frozen air on my sword, so that it would be even more undetectable and deadly. However, reality never works as planned. I tried many times but whether it is Holy Light of Power of Law, the moment they come into contact with frozen air, one of them would dissipate. It is either because their attributes clash with one another or that I am unable to meld them together in my current state. Ignore holy light and focus on frozen air instead. Can a holy knight who doesn't use holy light still be considered a holy knight? That would be either a pure warrior or a second-rate rookie warrior who is unable to focus on his swordsmanship. Naturally, I turned my attention into wielding dual blades. One sword will be enchanted with holy light while the other with frozen air. Theoretically, using two unique powers to strike my enemy concurrently will definitely reduce my enemies to tears. Furthermore, not only can this bring out the advantage of my high stats which are developing at the same pace, a fighting style that uses two kind of attributes is also quite suited for me, given that I have many different attributes. This also gives me the advantage of choosing what attribute I should enchant on each of my two sword to counter my opponent. But when I brought up my intention with the others, the knights, including Diana in the mix, don't approve of my thoughts, viewing it as an impossible task and a waste of effort. Dual blades don't simply mean using two swords. It is a totally different concept from wielding two swords in both hands. The cycle between attack and defense is extremely important. When the left sword strikes, even if the right sword doesn't go on the offense, it must move or the balance of the body will be shaken. Splitting one's focus into doing multiple things at the same time is the norm for dual blades. At the same time, it has a very high requirement of one's balance and agility. It is a style almost unique to elf swordsmen and you are a human. These are the words Diana said to dissuade to me. She almost directly said dual blades is a profession for elf swordsmen. It is impossible for you to learn it. Dual blades? Or wielding two swords? Ha ha, 
Are you a 3 meter tall ogre or a 2.5 meter highland barbarian? To actually be able to think of such a ridiculous thing. If you can achieve it, tonight, I will. Alright, looking at the scene in front her, Momo swallows her remaining words. At that moment, I was wielding a sword in my left and right hand each. In the start, my motion was still rigid and rusty. But, as I swung about, my motions gradually got more and more fluid. Eventually, my standard got to the level of veterans who have several decades of experience behind them. I don't believe it. It must be just the empty form without any contents inside. Come, let's spar. Alright, Momo personally challenges me. To the astonishment of the crowd, after my initial fluster, I gradually got control of the flow of the battle. The heavy dual swords were so dexterous as though they were part of my body. The coordination of the two swords had a light and swift tempo, dancing a waltz that brings about an image of the rapid flow of a stream. For Momo who was lacking in strength, she didn't even hold on for 30 seconds when she was defeated and retreated with numb hands. This is almost a miracle. The legend Holy Knight Diana looks at me with surprise and disbelief. Then, she smiles and nods her head, as though that this was the way it should be. In reality, there was no doubt that I had cheated. Ambidextrous, allows your left hand to be as dexterous as your right hand. Prerequisite, agility 15 plus, system notice, there is really no difference between left and right hand, please don't use this skill to do meaningless things. There was a period when I was roaming in the Elf Kingdom when I was so bored that I started training to be ambidextrous, that's why that grey colored option appeared in the skill tree. However, due to the fact that it is the core ability to a dual blade swordsman, even though my basic stats fits the prerequisite, I still paid 3 skill points for it. Giant wielding, being blessed by God's strength, you are able to wield a dual handed weapon like a one handed sword. However, due to inexperience, the accuracy and damage will be significantly lowered. Prerequisite, Strength 18 plus, System Notice, Even though giant wielding is a close combat skill is a universal talent, but with 18 strength, you can only learn it. To use the weapon properly, you will need at least 20 strength. If one isn't of giant race, normally only legend rank warriors can fit the criteria. However, by then, their battle style would already be fixed. So how would they change to dual wielding dual handed weapons at this point? That's why this is called the most useless skill. After devoting 4 skill points into it, countless battle techniques and experience gushes into my mind and my body recalls those sensations. This saved me a large amount of training time. Under the gazes of disbelief by the crowd, I grasp the basics of dual wielding dual handed swords. Of course. This is only the start which brings about the possibility of trying such a battle style. However, if I were to want to become a Grand Master class dual wielding expert like in the past, I would still require countless amount of time to grind my techniques along with actual battle experience and the opponents in front of me were very responsible sparring partners. Ha! The dual handed sword in my right hand radiates with golden light, brightening this pitch black underground chamber. The next moment, the thieves who were hiding in the shadows were smacked flying. Un. Smack. Not cut. Dual wielding heavy swords is a classical way of using strength to subdue others. They can use their weight and its size to bully others by smacking, crushing and chopping them. But, seeing how there was no movement after being sent smashing into the wooden crates, it seems that for the physically weak thieves, being smacked or cut doesn't really make a difference. It is a pity. Just consider it your misfortune then. Shaking my head, I continue walking forward. The moment I walked into the next room, an explosion occurs and smoke rises up from the ground. Then, from my front and my back, thieves and assassins come charging out from hidden chambers. Alright, looking at the green oily daggers, I would be courting death if I were to go easy on them. Thus, using my full strength, it became a one-sided battle. The moment the battle started, I immediately understood why the silver rank Momo would be defeated so easily. Just by changing a battle style which makes full use of the advantage of my basic stats, my fighting prowess immediately multiples by several folds. Still the same agile, lethal and accurate monarch swordsmanship without any tricks or unorthodox moves, but the swords come faster and faster, heavier and heavier, subduing the opponent through speed and strength. TL. Translated as Sword of the King previously in CHP 63, 
changed both to monarch swordsmanship. For the assassins who depend heavily on agility, losing in a battle of speed is fatal. The attacking arc for a dual-handed sword is already quite large, not to mention that we are in a narrow underground chamber. Once I start swinging that two pair of dual-handed sword, the space they have left for dodging is reduced significantly. When the assassins were losing out in the battle of agility which they were proud of, the ones who was on the offense is basically me. Furthermore, if they wanted to close in on me, they would have to tank a heavy sword of mine. After barely taking a heavy sword of mine, which was enchanted with holy light, his balance is already unsteady. As for my left sword, it is like a dangerous viper prowling about. It doesn't strike easily but the moment it does, it is aimed directly at the vitals, either their waist breaks or their throat would be crushed. The silver rank shadow assassin is the strongest of the bunch. Before the effect of my frozen air could take effect, he only managed to block three hits of mine before he was cut into two by my right sword. In just ten short seconds, the thieves lost seven or eight of their companion. When their leader, the strongest of them all here, died meaninglessly in battle. The thieves finally recognize that the opponent in front of them is an adversary they cannot overcome. Thus, they scattered and fled without any hesitation. I didn't chase them, because the Queen of Banshees was already complaining by my ear. If you don't hurry up, that fellow is going to escape. My clone is about to be taken away. It is difficult for me to split a clone at my current state, so don't waste it. She does have the right to complain. The reason why I am able to find this lair is really thanks to her. How did we find this well-hidden thief band? I played the role of a profitable target to them and allowed the Bloodhand Brotherhood band to pickpocket my wallet, and it is an extremely valuable tear-shaped gemstone. Just like in the intelligence I received, the Brotherhood band has extremely strict control over their basic members. Very quickly, even though there is some mysterious slime on the corners of a gemstone. The tear-shaped gemstone was quickly passed to the hands of the top brass of the Bloodhand Brotherhood Guild. Afterwards, following the direction of the Child of Greed, I traced them all the way here. Harlois continues to complain by my ear. If I don't hurry up, all of my preparatory work would be in vain. If the head of the band were to escape, I would lose out on the bounty rewards and the tributes, not to mention that my primary objective is the intelligence from the thief band. Despite in position, I couldn't see any path. There is definitely a secret passage in this underground tunnel. Thus, I hastened my search but very quickly, I realized that I didn't have any points in detection and mechanisms. Despite obviously feeling the presence of the child of greed inside, I just cannot find the mechanism. Forget it, being skillful really isn't for me. I am more used to crashing through using brute strength. Sort of order. Blast me a hole. Chapter 84 the Wolf King and the Crows Bay I Fang Caring Beast Tamer Hospital, providing you and your family members warm service. With the lowest price, you can enjoy royalty class service. Un, so it's fixed. Under the setting sun, the moment I stepped into the mansion, which looks totally different from before, I heard such an explosive statement that I started to suspect if I had walked into the wrong place. Let the world know my presence. Let our descendants know my existence. Even if I have to be cursed for thousands of years. Please put your full faith in us. Please pass your beloved pets to us. We only treat pregnant pets. We have a hundred years of history. Bay I Fang Caring Beast Tamer Hospital is worth your trust. That is the slogan written on all of the flags around the mansion. It almost blinded my eyes. Bay I Fang is currently arguing with someone while his blood brother, Cassio, is currently carrying one of the flag and shouting. However, it is hard for one to look directly at the slogan on the flag he attached to his body. I start to wonder that if old Meniel were to see his own grandson being reduced to such a state, would he be happy that he won't have to worry about there not being an internal war within his tribe or would he try to murder me? Big Brother Bai Feng is so warm and peaceful, why do you all hate him? Could racial discrimination be that deeply affixed in society? Looking at that passionate shout and the tears he has in his eyes for his big brother who he thinks is being misunderstood, I think old Miniel would probably try to kill me. If he isn't sufficient to achieve this task, he might even pull his entire tribe into the fight. On the other side, may the heavens strike Bay Ifane. Go and die gaze. Alright, it's fine if it is others holding the flag but for you two bastards who followed crows here. Do you all think you have the right to hold and wave that flag? Praise the law, the great court of law and church. 
that flag is stabbed into Crows's giant staff and the frenzied lightning around it gave people no doubt about her determination to protect her faith. The minority should give in to the majority. I say that we build the court of law. If you aren't pleased with the decision, come and fight. Those words were from Momo and on her face is a fierce look that matches the words she spoke. All right. The flags of both sides is hard for others to watch. The ones leading the faction is Crows and Momo, as well as the two Kalefairs waving the flag and shouting by the side. Ed, Kalefair means unimportant side characters very soon, just as I was glad that I had managed to successfully escape the great cleanup, I understood what has transpired here. In the end, as usual, I was the causal factor for the mess here. Before I left, I had casually said, this is such a big mansion. It's a waste to leave it as is. Our bedrooms are on the second and third floor. Why don't we use the first floor for something? If people walk in and out frequently, it can serve as a cover for us. All right, after these idle people finished cleaning up, they began to discuss how to make use of the first floor as well as the space in the garden. But as usual, the real debate only lasted for five minutes and the rest became a contention to realize their personal greed. It is better for us to make an animal hospital. We have Big Brother Bay Ai Fing, an experienced doctor here, as well as many beautiful nurses. We will definitely be able to make a fortune. Perhaps it is something Bay Ai Fing collected when he was still serving as a vet. Casio is currently displaying the nurse costume in his hands. Given the extremely short skirt and the black laces, it would definitely be extremely seductive if worn on the elves. Not to mention the two whose gazes keep alternating between crows and the nurse costume, they were starting to waver. Bastard, if people were to find out that I have worked in Bei Ai Feng's hospital, then I won't be able to get married in the future. However, Momo was still very resolute about it. She is currently working hard for her future. HMPH, you fierce granny. You think that you can get married in your current state? You think that no one knows about you secretly staring at Troll and sleeping? You lecherous wolf. Ah, at least I'm better than you. Can you still remain normal being together with Bei Ai Feng every day? You want me to be a nurse? Fine, only if you wear it as well. You, how can you say that? Our brotherhood is clean and pure. Fine, I will wear it. Do you think that I, the golden bow, am afraid of you? If I wear it. You have to approve of Big Brother Bei Ai Feng's proposal. I really don't know what you all are thinking about, such a good thing like making an animal hospital. Why must you all stop him? At the end of his words, Cassio really began to strip his armor to study how to put on the nurse costume. The little fellow looks extremely handsome with a masculine tone to his face. His solid muscles weren't exaggerated, but it had the aesthetics of a finely sculpted classical statue. However, if he were to put on a nurse costume. Let me go puke a bit first. Alright, if I don't stop him at this point, I won't have to eat dinner later. Even Corium dog eyes will be blinded. TL, Corium, greater than World of Warcraft expensive war. In China, there is a phrase called Corium dog eyes for people who are lucky enough to find this ore. The idea is that they have such powerful eyes that they are able to find Corium. But fortunately, someone stopped him in advance. Brother, it is good that you have such intentions but don't chastise them. History tells us that those who tread on new paths are always lonely and there will be a day when the apathetic world opens their eyes. We only have to try our best to express our sincerity and quietly wait. As for me, Bei Ai Feng's hands clasp together as he smiles lightly like a Buddha. The light of a saint seems to vaguely shine behind him. The world slanders me, bullies me, insults me, mocks me, underestimates me, corrupts me loathes me and scams me. How can I deal with that? I can only tolerate him, allow him, permit him, avoid him, condone him, respect him, ignore him and look at him after a few years. What can I do when everyone views me with enmity? I, love the world too much, too deep. Ah! The final ah is a scream of pain. Try acting profound, just try acting profound. You think we can't tell that the fake sacred light is from your sun grenade? You still dare to copyright the Buddhist scriptures from the East? Cure your head, you are obviously doing it to satisfy your own desires. You still dare to talk about love, must love make one depressed? I will beat you up, you warrior of love. Flying shoe strike, sin splitting strike, evil destroying blow. Try my demon subduing fist. TL, Bozizan. Throwing a shoe, Bozizan, slashing him, 
Zan Zuiji, probably some physical blow, all right, I also can't resist hitting him personally as well. Looking at the treacherous smile on Bei Ifeng's face and that saintly look he portrayed while that nonsense came out of his mouth, I really can't vent my frustrations if I don't beat him up. After that farce, the room got messed up once again by those flags with slogans on it despite just being cleaned up. I started to preach them. Look, how old are you all? Can't you all be more steady? Look at Diana, she isn't competing at all, how good is that? HMPH, it's because Big Sister doesn't know which one to go for. Un? Alright, in the hands of Diana, who blushed furiously red due to those words, I saw two flags. Recommend the construction of a court on the first floor. The Church of the Goddess of Moonlight, listen to the will of the true gods. Seeming less embarrassed from my staring, the grey elf seems to be mumbling something. After stepping closer to her, then I realized. Church of Holy Light is the best. Alright, this silly lass who is one beat slow seems to have finally made up her mind. Hearing these, her face seems to be looking at me with expectation, seeming to hope that I, as a holy knight, would approve of her suggestion. I can understand that as someone who has walked on the path of a holy knight for a few centuries, now you have sworn allegiance to the god of law but at the same time, chose the road as a savior, a grey elf, under the Lady of Moonlight, but is it really okay to believe in three true gods at once? Even if the Order Gods only have restrictions on people joining their churches and don't ban polytheism, but as a user of divine powers, can you show a little bit of restraint? Stepping into three boats at once, aren't you afraid of retribution from the gods? However, looking at how the valiant female legend knight turns cowardly and worried when she talks about faith. I know that there is no point in me lecturing her about it. What outsiders say won't help her at all, it all depends on her own decision in the end. I should have known that the gentleman alliance wouldn't have any normal people. Even if they look normal on the outside, but there will be something wrong on the inside. Even if they are originally normal, they will turn into a pervert after staying too long inside, looks at Cassio sympathetically. Probably, only Clint, who isn't here, is a little bit better. Wait. This isn't right. We have one person missing here. Where's Clint? How can I not be worried when there is one person missing, especially when the person missing is Clint, who is the most dangerous of them all? He disappeared the moment we started chatting. Perhaps. Kaka. Boom. Following the sounds of explosions and walls being blown apart, thick smoke starts to drift upwards. I stare speechlessly at the blue sky once again affirming my decision to look for a normal teammates tomorrow. He probably. You don't have to speak anymore, I understand. Next time, remember to put a leash on him and look after him properly. Tell him I said that. Alright, there is no need for her to elaborate any further, I can already understand the thought process of that eccentric king. Cleanup finished, greater than the preparation of the fort completed, greater than activate alarm system, greater than set up a lot of traps and explosives, greater than safety comes first, greater than sleep peacefully at night, safety comes first, you all don't have to be too thankful to me. The next moment, the king appears from some corner and sends us a thumbs up, proudly. Although I couldn't see his face below the helmet, I could feel that he was laughing gleefully below his helmet. I'll be back. Somehow, looking at the icy cold metal giant showing a thumbs up, I remember the famous phrase of a robot in a foreign world. Now, I am starting to get curious of what Clint looks like below his metal facade. Could he really be a iron core controlled magic metal puppet? That's why he is so enlightened? Sigh, forget it. It isn't worth getting angry with him. It isn't the first time anyway. Some people are destined to remain stubborn their entire life. Clint, who doesn't listen to teachings, is a prime example. There really isn't a point getting mad at him. Looking at plumes of black smoke rising outside the window, considering how my blood pressure is getting significantly higher despite being young, although I was so angry that veins were popping on my entire face, I hold my chest and quietly count one two three, trying my best to stabilize my rampaging emotions and blood pressure. Try to think positively. Since it has already exploded, just let it be. The old must go to let way for the new. It is also good for us to set up new defensive mechanisms. Wait, what did he explode? We just moved in here and we didn't have any customers yet, 
so who was it that just triggered the bomb that was just put in place? The, the dinner I just ordered, food and daily necessities. I secretly bought some classic treasure magazines and posters, Clint, you idiot. My exclusive collection, that was really expensive. Rushing out, as expected, it is the dinner and daily necessities I ordered after claiming my reward money. The carriage which is responsible for sending the goods has already been sent flying to the skies. The stableman and porter are still trembling there in fear. But, those expensive goods of mine have turned into charred waste. Ah, I can't take it anymore. Don't run. Let me kill you all and find new teammates. I will make sure to change them to some normal people this time. Alright, looking at the few remaining charred pages of the treasures that I got with much difficulty at the black market, the final strand of my rationality snaps. I didn't even get the chance to look at it before it was ruined. This isn't the time for me to be considering about my blood pressure, eat my great sin splitting strike. My dad and mum in heaven. I finally understand what it feels like to see your home wrecked after a hard day at work. I estimate that it is probably the same as what I am going through now. I regret, I have sinned, but can you not use these grown rascals to torture me? Can't you give me some normal people? If this goes on, I might explode from my high blood pressure before even reaching 20. This was what that was written in a certain someone's diary that night. However, as facts have proven. Weirdos will always attract weirdos and life forms like perverts are contagious. My biggest mistake was naming this band Gentleman Alliance and this was only the beginning. Dash, it is a quaint palace. There isn't colorful paint on the walls, there isn't any luxurious mat on the floor and even decorations like flower vases are lacking. Yet, it is the living quarters of the one holding supreme authority in the entire Holland Empire. Extravagance is just an appearance one shows to outsiders. Shove those messy things to one corner, they will only make my eyes hurt. When the court officials persuaded Darsos to follow the tradition of the previous emperors, rebuild the palace before his inauguration, the young emperor threw those words at them. Ignoring the persuasion of everyone else, he moved to the unused palace of the emperor two generations ago. Women? I'm not interested. I might be interested in other people's women though, and even more so if it is other people's land. The future king of winter wolves never tried to hide him ambitions and it's exactly because of his ability to turn his desires and ambitions into reality that allowed him to overcome the other seven sons of the previous emperor allowing him to be successfully crowned. War? There would definitely be one within five years of Darsos's inauguration. This is the common agreement among all of the foreign diplomats and state strategists. If it is a small country, everyone would have made a move when a war maniac were to rise to the throne. However, within the past 300 years, the Allend Empire has already accumulated enough underlying strength while the countries that border them aren't strong enough. From the peasants to the landlords, they all hope to receive an opportunity to reshuffle the cards and rise through the ranks. Under such circumstances, along with his promise of war, the inaugurating Darsos's popularity to soar to a fearsome level. Ren and Kelly's speculations weren't wrong. Darsos is using strength to put others under his control. If you surrender to me, then kneel completely beneath me. If you refuse, then you are simply giving me a reason to beat you until you surrender. But there's one thing they were wrong about. Darsos's ambitions are greater than they expected. How can just one subordinate state fulfill his greed? Should I send the orders? The selection ceremony for the Guardian Knight of the Prince's Knight. Just as recorded in the history, the King of Winter Wolves is a rare handsome figure. A high nasal bridge on his masculine square face. His flowing black hair reaches all the way to his waist and yet, it didn't give him the feeling of being a sissy. Perhaps, it is because of the eagle eyes which always had an aggressive gaze in them under those crescent eyebrows brows that made others unable to ignore his presence. At this moment, if the citizens of the mist country were to hear his words, they would definitely try to kill him even at the risk of their lives. All preparations are ready. 2 Legends, 4 Gold Rank and 10 Silver Rank our all and empire is overflowing with talented youths. Look at how much face we are giving her, we are giving such a good deal to that countryside princess. Ha, don't underestimate the mist bloodline. If it wasn't for the few wars with them that destroyed so many powerful empires, 
it would be impossible for our land empire to rise up, even a dying camel is bigger than a horse. I am quite interested in the secrets of the royalty. It is said that the Aurora Knights are the rarely seen human tier 4, gold rank, soldier. Even if just the slightest trace of it is remaining. It can definitely raise the military capabilities of our royal guards significantly. Yes, from the very start, what the All End Empire wanted wasn't a subordinate state. They wanted to annex the East Mist communal country. Guardian Knight? In Ike Continent, there is another name for the Guardian Knight of female nobles, Secret Lover. Of course, it often refers to the personal choice of the lady which due to several reasons is unable to marry. But apparently, Darsos has decided to do it forcefully without any consideration for Ren's opinion. There is only a female remaining in the Mist royalty. If her husband is an Alland man, then the next generation king would have half the bloodline of Alland. Naturally, this would be equivalent to devouring this little country. If she refuses to choose a guardian knight, this would mean insulting the supreme authority of Alland Empire. Un. It is a move to force you to rebel. Reject the alliance? Launch a war and annex them. Reject the guardian knight? Launch a war and annex them. Reject the alliance and guardian knight? Directly annex them. Against this powerful and shameless all and empire who is obviously picking on the weak, there is nothing much that the East Mist communal country can do. In this shabby palace, on the gigantic map hung on the wall, the East Mist communal country and four other countries in its surroundings had flags of multiple colors stabbed in them. This represents important strategic locations for war. The newly crowned King of Winter Wolves has already set his eyes of a predator on the small countries of the Alliance and out of them all, the one he is most satisfied with is the East Mist communal country in the south. As long as he were to take it down, there would be no one there match in the southern lands. They would have free access all the way to the borders with the beastmen. Through expansion, gaining new territory, the All End Empire will rise to greater heights. With a stable back, countless precious mines of the southern highlands and great profits from the trades by the borders, it would form the stepping stone for the great battle plan of the All End Empire to conquer the entire continent. After his subordinate left, the young king of winter wolves shut his eyes in deep thought. Just then, his connection with a someone in the shadows had been forged. Ka, well done, as expected of Claude's son. Looks like choosing you to be inaugurated is the right decision. Our cooperation will bring us to greater heights. Ha, filthy crows. I don't care why you all are still obsessed with that bloodline. But, as long as you all are able to prove your worth, I won't be stingy with my rewards as an emperor. Then, let me first thank your majesty in advance. As long as you can totally rid the mist bloodline, we, the Celestial Tower are willing to pledge our allegiance to you. Please anticipate our performance. On top of the palace, the pitch black crows dive into the skies and disappears into the gray clouds. Hey, allegiance? A bunch of souls that should have been long dead. The remainders that Lord Young I left behind still dare to talk to me about allegiance? However, a dog that bites is still a good dog, isn't that so? Claude. The young king of winter wolves said these words to the frame of his bed and below it, there is a cell in which a haggard looking old man is trapped within. Unfilial son, kill me. I will never tell you the final secret of the Alland Empire. You will always be an incomplete emperor. But, it is a pity that based on the design of the cell, Sound above could travel downwards but the sound from the bottom is unable to reach the surface. The screams of the old man could only echo helplessly in the underground chamber. Celestial Tower, greater than the two words in front means making prophecies from astrology while the last one means tower, ed.tldsk, think of the typical Xianxia where some old guy looks at the star and suddenly a shooting star passes by and he comments that the end of the world is coming. Chapter 85 the selection for a guardian knight all right, since your elder sister's not at home, then I'll come visit another day. Please accept this present of mine, this is just a little token of my sincerity. Yesterday, we spent half of the night forcing Clint at Swords Point to remove all of the traps and explosives that he had set. The other half, we used physical force to subdue him before he temporarily gave up on his objective. I didn't sleep well that night after all the ruckus those fellows caused. Even so, I went out by myself before sunrise. Un, since those fellows aren't reliable, 
I better quickly look for some reliable ones. I browse through the history of all and capital to double check that the few I am looking for are currently in the capital. But, at this point, they have all yet to mature despite being future experts. This time, in order to make sure that the ones I choose are normal people, I even bore with the pain and struck off a few names. The rest of them, regardless of them reputation, strength or character, they are all respectable future heroes however, what surprised me was that despite visiting two of their houses early in the morning, they weren't at home. For the third trip, I found the home of Rain Swallow Swords Venity Nelson but I was told that she has also left early in the morning. I was a little surprised. Where could a female swordsman like Svena head to so early in the morning? Little brother, can you tell me where your elder sister went to? If the first time is a coincidence then three times surely cannot pass off as so. When I questioned the family members of the first two where they went, they tried to brush off my question. But now, since the other party is a little kid who is easy to coax, I won't let off such an easy target. Big Sister told me not to say. Big Sister went to attend a Guardian Knight's election for a foreign princess. All right, as expected of a small kid. Rascal. The lollipop and toy I prepared for the little brother Svena loves immediately caused him to forget his big sister's commands. Guardian Knight? Princess? Svena is a female, why would she join such an event? I couldn't help but chuckle. However, when I remembered what the walkthrough wrote about the life of this female hero, I could understand why. Rain Swallow Sword Svena, a descendant of a high noble of all and empire. After her family fell when she was still young, the wish of the female swordsman had been to bring her family back to its former glory. She once disguised as a male and joined the military in hope to rise through the ranks. However, when her identity was exposed, she was expelled from the Flying Dragon Knight Order which she commanded. From then on, she started to tread on a lonely road. Clearly, this elder sister is trying to accomplish her prior goals in history, thus disguising as a male to join the Guardian Knight's election for a foreign princess. After all, as long as she is able to become the Guardian Knight of the foreign princess, she is able to rid herself of her identity as peasant, thus taking a big step forward for the resuscitation for her family. Wait, Guardian Knight selection? Foreign princess? Little Tiago, which country did that foreign princess come from, do you know it? Un. Seems to be something missed I think. In an instant, realization struck me. The raging emotions that boils in my chest caused me to be unable to perceive his remaining words. Darsos. You dare. Dash. Rage. Helplessness. Fear. Despair. Rand could no longer use words to describe her own emotions. The bustling all and royal sparring field in front of her and the cheers of the innumerable audiences made her fall into a desperate situation. Congratulations. Your respected Highness Ren. Your well-known beauty has even surpassed the boundaries of the Aster Mountains. Look, the youths who came today are not bad. You should be able to find a Guardian Knight whom you are satisfied fault with. Guardian Knight? For my husband to be chosen by you all Enders, how dare you? Her furious roar regurgitates in her throat before being swallowed back in. The reason why this Guardian Knight's election was shoved so suddenly into her face is so as to not give her time to react. If she were to make use of this opportunity to say I didn't agree on this I won't acknowledge the Guardian Knight from this selection, the other party would make use of this opportunity to turn it into a diplomatic issue turning it into the trigger needed to start a war. Looking at the bright smiles on the faces of the diplomats from other countries, their gazes of sympathy, helplessness and envy, Ren knew that it was meaningless to ask them for help. There were all sorts of emotions on their faces except for surprise. Apparently, they had all gotten the notice in advance but as the person involved in this selection, she only got the news two hours ago. Who knew what the All and Empire offered them? The alliance that they had agreed on just yesterday had crumbled today as they offered her as a sacrifice without any hesitation. Ren was enraged, but there wasn't anyone for her to vent it on. She knows that in a social event, lashing out would only make others question and underestimate her in her homeland while tears is only a sign of immaturity and weakness is this the relationship between countries that teacher talked about the bloody survival of the fittest those arrogant all anders one day you will all pay the price the true king of winter wolves will crush your throats 
the only thing she could do is to try her best to squeeze a smile and engrave the hateful face of everyone else into the depths of her heart. The King of Winter Wolves Darso stares playfully into the face of this little lady. 14 years old, it's an age where those from rich noble families are still fooling about. But, the little lady in front of him grinded her teeth and tried to suppress her emotions, apparently well aware of what is going on. Facing such humiliation at a young age, being pulled into a situation which might bring unhappiness for life, it is rarer for one to be able to keep their calm. However, as his opponent, as a stepping stone for his own ambitions, she is still too young. The rumor about her equaling to the might of thousands should just be propaganda. Cheers to the great alliance that we are about to forge. Cheers to the valiant youths of the All End Empire. Cheers to our charming Princess Ren. As the Emperor raises his cup, the other nobles happily raises their golden cups of red wines along with him. The only who is not fitting in with the crowd is the princess who is being showered with blessings. She stares coldly at them, like a wolf staring at her prey from higher grounds. Remembering this hatred and insult to exact vengeance in the future is the only thing she could do now. Pardon me, allow me to touch up on my makeup. But in the end, she is just a 14-year-old girl. Anger despair and the feeling of being wronged made her eyes turn red. Unwilling to shed tears in front of her enemies, she used the reason of touching up on her makeup to leave temporarily. The moment she walks down from her pedestal, following Darso's eye signal, two well-built guards follows her. The star of the show today is Ren and the issue with the Guardian Knight has to be fixed on the spot today. Darso's won't allow any mishap to happen, so it is impossible for him to allow her to escape. Soon, with one of them standing guard outside the toilet, the other ran back to report. Darso's nods his head and turns his attention back to the performance below. In Darso's point of view, he doesn't think that he has mistreated the young princess. The contestants below are all small nobles and elites of the All End Empire and he was also making use of this opportunity to find talents for him to use. Of course, the high nobles and members of royalty won't attend such a selection. While they are able to gain prestige and standing from a foreign princess, it will also distance them away from the center of authority in all and following the traditional practices of guardian knight selections, this is a sparring contest. In order to woo their beloved ladies of nobility, the young knights display their knight chivalry and their outstanding martial arts. As long as they show sufficient capabilities, even those who lose will be respected by the crowd. The two legends prepared by the official side, after confirming that there are no dark horse that would threaten this selection, resigned readily from the competition. After all, the two legend uncles aren't young anymore, so bullying a lady like this would be going too far. The battle has already proceeded into the semi-finals. At this point, all of the remaining warriors are at least Goldrink and the Rain Swallow Sword Svena is one of them. The future Emperor of All and Empire sips his cup while enjoying the love of his people. Suddenly, looking at the fierce and powerful swordsman who is like the storm, he frowns and calls for his servant, whispering some words into his ear. While the dignitaries of the All and Empire were satisfied by this performance, no one's thoughts were on the foreign princess whose present situation was like a meat laid on a chopping board. At this moment, in the VIP dressing room, in the dressing mirror, an image of a tear-stained young lady whimpering silently could be seen. After all, she is only 14 years old. Just a year ago, she was still a carefree princess but now, the cruel war of politics were all forced onto her young shoulders. One wrong step could very well cause the downfall of her country. Thinking about her kin and her people back in her homeland who trust her, thinking about the humiliation she is about to face, she couldn't stop the tears from streaming down. Father, big sister Kelly, I'm really not qualified to be a princess. Then, do you want strength? Strength that can change your fate. Suddenly, a voice seems to echo in the room from nowhere. The warm voices that reaches into her soul matron instinctively trust it, as though it was the voice from the gods and her ancestors. Yes, as long as I can change everything, even if I have to pay everything, including my soul, I am willing. Who are you? What did you do to me? All right, the persuasion spell was broken. I received her answer but I shake my head in response to it instead. Sigh. It must be Carwin's descendant, you are really too dumb to give your bottom line at the start of the deal when you haven't even seen the other party's trump card yet. To be willing to give everything including your soul, 
Any devil that comes by would be able to rob you of everything. You failed. You. Who are you? The isolation barrier made sure that her voice didn't escape. Before the young lady lost consciousness, the last thing she saw was a face identical to hers and a somehow familiar voice. Sleep for a while. This burden is indeed too heavy for you to bear. Allow me to share your weight. But, your result for this pop quiz is zero points. Youngster, remember to work hard for your retest. Dash 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 the Guardian Knight's election has finally reached its final phase. The two remaining contestants are outstanding young knights. The tall and well-built Carter is the team leader of All and Empire's Flying Dragon Knight Order. Despite being just 27, through his outstanding martial arts and his myth-class Hammer Beast Man Grinder, he swept his way through the competition and is now standing on the stage of the finals. His enemy is that young nameless swordsman. That swordsman is the kind of enemy he hates the most, an agility type swordsman. After realizing that the handsome feminine lad's fighting abilities is even above that of his, Carter was initially very worried. However, at this moment, the sudden arrival of joyous news made him overjoyed. As expected, the moment they started fighting, the swordsman fought extremely carefully. You still hope to be a guardian knight despite being a girl? Are you sure you have the abilities to? Yes, the news that he got is that his opponent in the finals is actually a girl. If the guardian knight turns out to be a girl, then the All and Empire's scheme would naturally turn out to be laughably for naught. Females can't bear offspring with another female. If so, wouldn't they be just freely giving a knight away to the other party? After being warned, Svena can only grind her teeth at the mocking laughter of her opponent. When she received a secret message from the servant of the royal family, she thought that it was a recruitment notice, so she extremely ecstatic. However, she didn't expect that her identity has been exposed and she was strictly warned to not claim the championship of this duel. She wants to win, and she has the confidence to do so as well. But, to disobey the will of the Emperor of the All and Empire? Is she sick of living? In the end, before the final match even began, the ending was already predetermined. On the pedestal, the Princess Ren who finished touching up her makeup returns. It is still the same face along with the same battle skirt. Just that, this time, her aura seems slightly different. If her previous face, which was on the verge of crying, reminded others of a hatchling, then the current Princess Ren who smile as she walk with steady steps along with the natural confidence and pride she exuded makes one think of an eagle scouting its prey. My apologies to keep you all waiting. It's fine, it's fine. Somehow, when those smiling eyes were directed towards them, the few leaders of the small countries who just abandoned their alliance felt a little guilty. In just five short minutes, she seemed to have turned into a different person. Even Darso's is surprised. Ah! That swordsman is actually a female. How could a female join the competition? The winner, Carter Diaz. At this moment, the victor below has emerged. The hesitant Svena got hit heavily on her shoulders and her hair which was bound tightly together bursts out. As her identity is exposed, she naturally lost the opportunity to vie for the championship. The two meter tall Carter carries his hammer and signals to the pedestal his actions bearing a striking resemblance to a giant ape receiving a prize. There are already people who are discussing about the pairing of the wild beast and a girl. But, Princess Ren simply smiles. Since you will be my guardian knight, then you should be at least stronger than me. Can I spar with you personally? How can we dirty the hands of your highness? Your highness is more suited to be doing embroidery in the warm interiors of your palace. It is better to leave the crude job of leading soldiers to war to men. Darso's laughs but his words were sharp. He is sarcastically hinting that the other party is only suited to be a kind wife and a good mother. Even though he has thought of Ren's battle records as a propaganda, but how could he give the other party an opportunity to overturn the situation at a time like this? Just a single blow will suffice. I just want to see if he is as sturdy as he looks on the outside. If he is useless on the inside, then wouldn't I be making a loss? The young lady sticks out her tongue a gesture which is unspeakably cute. However, along with the words that doesn't fit her previous image, it caused uproar within the crowd. But, since Princess Ren has went this far, it would make it seem as though the All and Empire is petty if they do not give in. Thus, Darsos nods his head. Afterwards, his servants start to announce with a loud voice. Right now, my warriors, 
Knight Garter will face another challenge. Our respected Princess Rin will personally try his strength to prevent our strong knight from injuring the cute princess. This test would require Carter to receive three blows from our princess. If Knight Carter is able to withstand them, then our new guardian knight would be born. All right, this servant obviously understands the meaning of his lord. He made it sound as though that Princess Wren insisted on stepping on the battlegrounds and that they had to reluctantly agree to it. The original one strike turning into three blows may sound generous, but there isn't much of a difference to it. It is actually a type of arrogance and confidence. As for the final part about new guardian knight would be born, he is trying to reaffirm things so that there would be nowhere for Ren to retreat to. Good job, Carter. Princess Ren, please go easy on him. Ha ha ha. Mocking laughter and racket fills the entire arena and everyone views the trial of three blows as a joke. Even Carter himself couldn't help but nod while smiling foolishly, as though the princess have already agreed to marry him. But, Ren simply laughs. It is a pity that I didn't bring any weapon. Your Majesty. Can I borrow a sword to use? Of course, as long as you are able to use it. Darso's hands over his own personal sword with malicious intentions. That blood-colored legendary sword is well known to be aloof and boast to no one. He's waiting for Rin to make a fool out of herself. Demon Sword, the Scarlet Conqueror as the personal sword of the Emperor of All and Empire. It is a legend class equipment. It only submits to true conquerors. The weak won't even get a chance to come into contact with it. If they were to force themselves to use it, they would only become a blood slave for the demon sword. There are already a few unlucky fellows who have had their blood sucked by the demon sword. The few Allanders who knew about the secret of the sword were waiting to watch the princess make a joke out of herself. Your Majesty, thanks for your kindness. Ah, such a feisty little fellow. But, a good kid has to listen obediently to instructions. However, the scream and the tossing away of the sword that they expected didn't happen. Instead, in that slim arms, the red demon sword seemed to glow even brighter. In the next moment, all of the light seems to gather back within the sword, the blood light gathering on the blade of the sword to prepare to battle. It seems to be even more obedient than a pet dog facing its own owner. As the sword's owner, Darsos couldn't believe what he just saw. He has never seen the demon sword act so humble. The Scarlet Conqueror only respects ambitious dictators. Could it be that in the eyes of this sword, this little girl is an even greater conqueror than him? Feeling that something is amiss, Darsos wanted to stop her but it was too late. Ren didn't walk down the stairs that lead to the sparring field. Instead, she walks to the corner of the watch stand and raises her head to look at the blue sky. How many years have it been? The mist bloodline has been guarding the borders of the human world through the fresh blood and life of countless of its tribesmen, but all it received was the enmity and suspicion of others. Ren steps on the border of the stand, causing a commotion in her surroundings. Worried that she was about to commit suicide, the servants have all rushed up. However, Light so dense as though it was tangible appears from her back, making them unable to get near to her. How many times has it been? Those bloody wounds have yet to heal and the new despicable traitors are stacking new wounds on top of the old. The sacred alliance ripped apart as though it was waste paper. A pleasant voice echoes from the stand. Despite it being simply normal words, there seems to be magic to it. Wherever those clear eyes gaze at, Traitors feel as though they were being interrogated in hell by their conscience. All of you, you all wish to know of the secret of the Mist Royalty? Fine, let me tell you all. The Mist Royalty possesses the powers of God. God's blessing, war angel form. Ren jumps off from the stand. The light that bursts forth from her back forges a pair of tangible wings. Flying in midair, under the stare of everyone else. She is surrounded by endless radiance and successfully turns from a mortal into a war angel. Different from the new generation of angels who serve as God on voice, this ancient war angel is a personal creation by the goddess of order. It is the vanguard in the crusade against the malevolent gods of chaos, the king of the entire angel tribe. The golden wings represent the endless power of order while the burning sacred flames represent judgment and punishment. The golden marks that extends throughout the entire body is the engravings of the rules of the world. In the faraway ancient times, the only opponent for a war angel is the stronger malevolent gods or demon lords. As the golden wings unfurl, the flames on her head burn furiously and the sacred and pure inferno seems to merge together with the bloodlight of the demon sword. With a flap of her wings, 
the war angel Ren appears on the space above Carter. My guardian knight? Laughable mortals, do you admit your sin? I, I, I. Facing an interrogation by a war angel, Carter starts to waver. The repeated teachings of several churches have carved the image of angels as the oracles of the order gods deeply into the mind of mortals. There are already very few oracles of true gods in the world and now, a mortal actually dares to tries to vie for the adoration of an angel. Is this not a crime? All right, he doesn't have to say any more. I, Ren didn't even wait for him reply before bringing down the blood-colored inferno sword on him. Clang. What was unbelievable is that Carter actually managed to bring up his hammer to block this sword. The two weapons met each other and sparks flew about. I managed to block it. I actually managed to take it. Why aren't you all cheering for me? I am the victor, just two more swords, I will be able to wed the princess. But soon, he understood why. Indeed, he managed to block the blow but the sacred flames on it followed the weapon and turned him into a human torch. He didn't even manage to scream out before he was reduced to ashes. The newly appointed guardian knight was destroyed with just a hit from the person he was going to swear loyalty to not to mention how pathetic his death was. In an instant, the giant sparring field turned silent and cold. HMPH, one who doesn't know his place. A toad craving the meat of a swan. Maintaining the war angel form really saps a ton of power. Within just 10 seconds, all of Ren's stamina and power of Ordor was squeezed dry. As she withdraw her wings back, Ren turns back into a mortal. Pa pa pa. What followed was Darso's applause and frenzied laughter. Ha ha ha. Indeed, he doesn't know his place. How can a normal man be worthy to serve as your guardian knight? Darsos walks closer and suddenly kneels with one leg in front of me. Then, the beautiful Princess Ren, can I, the Emperor of All and Empire, Darsos. Minon, be granted the honor to be your guardian knight? What? This is equal to proposing on the spot. Furthermore, this is the emperor who is known in the country to be uninterested in the charms of a female. In an instant, the field broke out in a commotion, filled with discussions and cheering. But, I knit my eyebrow together. Un, me, not Ren. The true Ren has been long thrown to Diana. From the moment when Ren returned from the washroom, it has been my show. Even more so, the war angel form is my race talent. Right now, Everything that has occurred is within my expectation with the exception of Darso's confession. A confession from a male to another, disgusting. But at this moment, there is an urgent need for me to consider it seriously. The proposal of an emperor involves the pride of his country. If I don't settle it properly, it might lead to the start of a war. Since rejecting him outright or accepting him are not plausible solutions, then I can only settle it my way. Impossible. Why? As long as you are willing to accept me, I can even give you half of my empire as betrothal gift. You can become the queen of all and empire. With the both of us working together, we can obtain everything in the world. Isn't this much better than suffering in the cold and hunger by the cold borders? After being rejected, Darso's lashes out like a furious lion, questioning me angrily. We are impossible from the start. I swear within the name of holy light that I am uninterested in man. I only like woman. All right, the sparring field which was still bustling a moment ago turned cold. Their emperor, who just proposed in public, was rejected in an incomparably miserable way. For a divine job like a holy knight, the vow that they make using the name of the origin of their power must be true, otherwise fooling the true gods would cause them to be stripped of the power that God granted them. As seen from the vigorous holy light around her, she isn't lying. She really likes females. At this moment, I walked straight to the final person on the stage, Svina, who lost due to her identity as female being exposed. I thank the All and Empire for holding this Guardian Knight selection for me, allowing me the opportunity to meet such a cute knight. Un, she will do. Lowering my head, I kiss the forehead of the girl who had been scared silly thus completing the final part of the ritual of a guardian knight. A knight and a princess falling in love at first sight. A beautiful tale has been created. Congratulations, congratulations. Thousand years later, history would be recorded as such. Rinkin Mist, or better known as the Lily Princess, despite being a female, has a lily back palace with hundreds of concubines. Svena D. Nelson would be recorded as the first knight of the Lily Princess as well as the first concubine she personally chose, the story above is completely fabricated, 
If there is any similarities, it is due to coincidence. Chapter 86 An old friend when a certain princess was performing haughtily, the real princess could only tremble and rage under the stage. Back then, when she awakened from her coma, she realized that she was stripped naked like a small white goat, sitting in the stands with just a cloak wrapped around her. If it wasn't for the two gray elves watching her movements by her side and that she was afraid that it might lead to unresolvable troubles, she would have long held a tantrum. Initially, she was depressed over the fact that a bogus princess could handle the situation better than the real princess. Then, after witnessing the war angel form, she was dumbfounded. The humans are a very xenophobic race. Even so, there is one bloodline that not only do they not reject, it is even highly respected among most humans. Angel. The first generation children of the Order faction, the oldest son of the gods who participated in the creation of the human race, a race of gods that already transcended the mortal world. Compliments towards this race are far from lacking on the walls of the church and in the sacred hymns. Regardless of whether in history or novels, the angels are always a pure and sacred tribe. Their existence itself is the will of God and where their blade is pointed at would be the nemesis of the order faction. Perhaps, the current existing angels might be unable to appear in the mortal world for certain reasons. This is also one of the main reasons why humans who believe in the order gods worship them so much. After all, for a true monarch, it is best for religion to be further away from their authority. At that instant, Ren immediately understood the reason for the actions of the bogus princess and silently cheered for her. Could she really be here to help me? Just by the war angel form bloodline ability, the misroyalty would not be looked down upon. Even if it is just putting on a brave front, with the blueprints provided to us previously, as long as we have sufficient time, there will be hope for us to rise up once more. Upon seeing the sword that struck down on Carter, Ren clenches her fist in agitation. Not mentioning how she was disgusted by that giant ape, the frustration that she has been accumulating these days left her without a sliver of goodwill towards this country. However, Darso's immediate proposal afterwards left her completely stunned and in shock. The marriage between two monarchs? It is inconceivable just by the thought. Regardless of whether the guy is doing it for the bloodline ability or to annex East Mist communal country, while clearly displaying his ambitions in public, he is also expressing his sincerity towards the mist. Indubitably, this is an important diplomatic decision. At that instant, Ren really hesitated on whether she should sacrifice herself to accept his proposal. Perhaps, this would grant her country some breathing space. But the next moment, she realized that when strength of two working partners are too far apart, then in another sense, one side would be effectively taking possession of the other. Reject it. It must be rejected by all means. However, wouldn't rejecting it directly hurt Darso's pride and bring shame to the entire Holland Empire? If this isn't settled well, it could lead straight to war. Is there any possible way out? Apparently, it is an unexpected event that no one was prepared for. However, putting the full authority of the Holland Empire on the line, Darso's never even expected that he would be rejected. However, in what the real Ren sees as a desperate situation, to the bogus Ren, it is just a walk in the park. I'm sorry, you're a male, but I like females. The result of Darso's confident proposal is a merciless rejection. Even if he wanted to blow this matter up, he has no idea where he should start from. In the end, the situation could end as a farce and gossip before meals. For one's target for proposal to be someone with unique sexual orientation, that kind of rejection is probably the only one that leaves one helpless. At the same time, it is the most powerful reason for rejection. How can one date when the gender is wrong? While Ren was still glad over the fact that she and the East Mist communal country barely escaped a calamity, she immediately realized the new troubles she was about to face. Despite being saved, she seems to have fallen into a pit dug by the bogus Wren and given the depth of the pit, it is one she is unlikely to escape from for her entire life. Wait, to use my face to make such a declaration in front of everyone else, wouldn't I be unable to redeem my reputation in the future? Then, won't I be unable to marry anyone for my entire life? Alright, tomorrow's headlines for all kinds of newspapers have been confirmed to be Emperor's proposal falls through. Princess Ren exposes her sexual orientation, the secret history of the Emperor's love rival, Svina, the love triangle that transcends national borders. Without doubt, 
these would be the hottest topic for at least a period of time. What about Trin herself? Under the witness of the God of Holy Night, there is no doubt about the authenticity of her declaration of true love as a holy knight. Very quickly, as rumors and intelligence start to spread, Princess Ren's unique taste of being more into beauties than her kingdom would be common knowledge throughout the entire world. Furthermore, this is the type of situation that requires her to follow through. If it is proven that she is normal in the future, then she would be seen as deceiving the Alland Emperor in front of his own people, humiliating the entire Alland Emperor. If so, the outcome would be disastrous. Then, not only can Ren not redeem herself, she still has to try her best to pretend to be an abnormal female. In the worst case scenarios, she even has to get herself a few wives and concubines. You bastard, I'll kill you. How can I face the others after this? Alright, if it wasn't for Diana holding her down, Ren, who is dressed scantily, would have charged up onto the stage without any hesitation. As this tragedy turned completely into a farce. As the different presses rushed to inform the people about what transpired in the royal sparring grounds, the real and bogus princess return together to the temporary embassy and sit around the same table. Roland, you are Roland. You are indeed alive. Long time no see, Kelly. TL, he calls her Kelly Gia, a casual way to address someone you are close with and more senior than you, in terms of age. Dash 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 due to the exciting performance by the princess. The obscure East Mist communal country became a hot topic in an instant. The embassy where visitors were few initially found its center and bursting with people at this moment. However, the gate is firmly locked, expressing their intention to not accept any visitors. However, this didn't stop a commotion from going on in the meeting room on the second floor. Bastard, you're going down. To think that you would actually lay a trap for me. In front of the young lady whose rage couldn't be quenched, I who have returned back to Roland's appearance, is sipping on the iced bitter tea leisurely. This is a specialty of my homeland. Given the fact that I haven't tasted it for a long time, I have to make sure to savor it properly. Then, can you come up with a better solution? One that doesn't hurt the pride of the all and empire while rejecting them at the same time. You should be thankful for me, otherwise you would be in deep trouble now. Ren isn't an unreasonable person. As the words I spoke are all true. Ren immediately quiets down. She has been thinking about it all this while but not mentioning a better solution. She couldn't even come up with a feasible one on her own. Who are you? Roland wouldn't address me like that. Despite being initially delighted, after hearing how I addressed her, hesitation appears on Kelly's face. The arrogant Roland would never call anyone else big sister or big brother, he. In my diaries. Kelly is one of the few people which I was extremely close to in the past. As expected, I was unable to hide the fact from her. However, to think that I would be exposed the moment I opened my mouth. Then, let's try the second way of addressing her as written on the diaries. Right, there is the little secret about this wood elf as well. Un, little Kelly. Is the star-shaped birthmark behind your neck in the mole below your right breast and left thigh still there? Hearing that. Kelly immediately covers her breasts with her arm, her face red from embarrassment. She stares at me with a look as though trying to ward off a sex fiend. My companion, Diana, also looks at me in shock. I have forgotten many things. But, for someone from a race of short lifespan to surpass their longevity, a price like this should be natural, right? Calablian shakes her head. Even though her instincts tell her that the man in front of her is indeed Roland, she is still hesitant to accept it. As this is quite a big matter, it's natural that she would be extremely careful about it. There is a possibility that the man in front of her might have just obtained that information from the belongings that Trollin left behind. Fortunately, she has a much better way of authenticating the identity of the man in front of her. She takes out the short dagger of two dragons coiled together, that is the light of life that is directly linked to the soul. The moment I stepped closer to the dagger, the white pearl immediately radiates brilliantly, proving that it is my light of life. Indeed, it is you little pervert. But how did you manage to extinguish and light it up again and again? Before I could even react, Kelly hugs me tightly, her overjoyed expression making one suspect whether she really is the same combo del from a moment ago. Hey, that's simple. Reviving after dying, dying after reviving, that's all. Hearing that, Kelly stuns. Reviving after dying. 
dying after reviving? It may seem easy but as long as one has a slight understanding of the world and souls, they would definitely know that it is an impossible task. Alright, it is hard for us to be reunited so let's not talk about these boring matters. Right, the color of the light of life is the indicator to show whether the soul is sided with the order faction or the chaos faction right? Looks like Carwin's is one is really completely black. Indeed, what else could be more sided to the chaos faction than the demons who are the incarnation of chaos? Surprisingly, Kelly shakes her head. 130 years ago, your soul pearl was even darker than his. Can you tell me whether you are him? The nightmare who represents the dark night. TL, young I means eternal night. The wood elf asks me with a trembling voice. Even if intelligence that Lord Young I's Roland has been spreading among the leaders of each country, as the mentor of the twin stars, she has been unwilling to believe that Roland, who was kind and warm like a ray from the sun, would actually come to such a point. Un, it's me. Back then, I investigated and realized that the reasons for the destruction of the Mist Country isn't that simple. Thus, I purged all of the suspects responsible for it and their accomplices. Hey, it looks like I went a little overboard in the end. Ah, Big Sister Kelly. What did you do? Why would Big Sister Kelly faint? All right. Having her worst nightmare warp into reality, emotions start to surge in the silent Kelly, assaulting her heart, causing her to faint on the spot. After she faints, the three people remaining on the spot could only stare at one another. The me who has lost his memories and can only know from the diaries that Kelly really deeply loves the previous me is unable to understand her excessive reaction. After Brent's immediate treatment, Kelly gains consciousness once again. Then. She suddenly hugs me and starts to weep. Woo you you, it is all because of my uselessness that caused you and Carwins to suffer so much. The strong sense of self-reproach from watching the person she values fall into depravity, the warm prince to turn into a demon lord caused Calablian to weep silently. Teardrops moisten my back and the familiar yet foreign touch left me emotionless. This is my first time experiencing the care and concern of an elder towards a junior. It made me feel uncomfortable making me want to escape from it. Looks like I have to look for something to retrieve my memory. Despite seeing the other party breaking down in tears, I couldn't feel anything at all. For the first time, I feel that diaries could not replace true memories. Some things cannot be retrieved the moment they are lost. Alright, it took me much effort before I managed to persuade the tearful Kelly from her self-reproach to return the topic to the main issue at hand. Will you return? The trembling Kelly questions. I shake my head in response. Why should I return? My people are still in Luwang Mountain City. The current East Mist communal country is no longer the original Mist country. Besides, it is unconventional for a retired monarch to ascend back to the throne. Also, my goals also doesn't allow for me to be limited to only one country. However, I will help the Mist Country rise up once again. The blueprints have already expressed a part of my sincerity. The main show still awaits, starting from this sword. Roland's Sacred Sword, Semi-God Equipment Attack Power, 22 to 44 plus 11, plus 11 additional damage due to it being a plus 11 Semi-God Equipment. Even if the sword deals damage of the lower limit, it will deal additional 11 unavoidable Silver Inferno Magic damage. Indestructible, even against God equipment, this sacred sword will not break. Out of the two times it has broken, one of it is because of a yore, while the other time is because it's already in an incomplete, weak state, which allowed the Dragon Saber to destroy it through its unique ability. The Royal Seal of the Mist, Roland's sacred sword is a symbol of the power of the Mist royalty. Only with the acknowledgement of the king can one use this sacred sword. Along with the rise of the Mist Kingdom once again, it is trying its best to evolve to become even stronger. At the same time, this proud sacred sword can only be used by the king of the Mist Kingdom and his trusted knights. The prestige of the king, strength plus 2, agility plus 2, stamina plus 2, charm plus 2. In the country built by the Mist bloodline, the reputation would be equal to the respect the user earns. There are yellow words carved on the body of the sword. The Roland Sacred Sword is the sword used by the Holy Knight Prince Roland in the legends. Only his descendants and inheritors of his will can be acknowledged by this sacred sword. Prerequisite to equip, Mist Bloodline, 
The silver sacred sword emits blinding radiance while I shed tears silently. I knew that the system definitely had ill intentions when it allowed me to reforge the sword. From the start, it isn't a weapon that I could wield. To become a knight that is loyal to the royalty, then, it would require an inauguration ceremony. Not mentioning that the current East Mist communal country is unable to do it. Even if it is able to, I am unwilling to be a knight that swears loyalty to someone, even if the person is likely to be my descendant. Even if I am able to use the sword, that is at most another top dare weapon in my hands. Even though these kind of things are hard to come by, it is still possible to look for them. With the guide of history, I don't think that it would be too difficult to look for a replacement. However, if the crown prince of this generation, the prince's knight, were to retrieve the Roland sacred sword, which is the mark of authority of the king, it would seem as though it were the plannings of the heavens. In this era where the authority of a monarch and religions intersect with one another, the recovery of a lost treasure representing symbol of authority in the country will greatly unify the entire country. Those previous citizens who left due to war will also start to reconsider returning back to their homeland. At the very least, Wren, who managed to recover the Roland sacred sword, will find her reputation soaring. With the weapon of a royal authority in their hands, they can even try to negotiate a merger with the other two countries built by the refugees of the former Mist country. Only this way, with both land and people, will there be hope for the rise of the Mist country once again. Roland Sacred Sword Is this the legendary Roland Sacred Sword? The moment the Jubilant Trent touches the Sacred Sword, she was sent flying by a rebound. However, looking at how she wasn't burnt by the Silver Inferno. It seems she fulfills the requirements for its usage. It is just that she is still too weak, so weak that she couldn't even earn the approval of the sacred sword. However, looking at the determined princess, I started to ponder on a way to make her strong. Ren, why are you so weak? Is there no one to teach you? Ren's talent for swordsmanship is still okay, but that is only stuck at the level of just okay. With many troublesome matter weighing down on her. There is no time for her to slowly train in her swordsmanship. On the other hand, she doesn't have any talent in divine arts, so it is impossible for her to walk on the route of a holy knight or a priestess. Even though she is intelligent, she doesn't have large amount of time required for a mage to mature. Thus, the most she can do is to train a little bit on the way of the sword and strengthen her body. Don't use Carwins and you yourself as a standard for comparison. In the thousands of years of history of the Mist Royalty, you both are one of a kind, so it would be unfair to the other members of royalty if you both were to be compared to them. I nod my head. I have a rough idea on what I should do. I have a new job here, Justice Knight. Although they are the Knights of the God of Law, in reality, they are similar to the Holy Knight in the sense that they don't have to be completely loyal to the Church. Also, unlike other divine arts, it doesn't require the will stat. What it requires is intelligence as well as understanding and analysis of the law. Perhaps, the East Mist communal country can try to come into contact with the god of law as well. If it is able to become its national religion, then many things would change. Right, we also have to start grooming the Aurora Knights from this moment. It would be too late by the time the winter season starts. We didn't take too long to talk about the main issues at hand. After all, I was the one who was doing most of the talking while the both of them listened to my words. The final decision isn't something that could be decided on the spot. However, there is a private matter that I would really like to ask. Right, Kelly, who exactly is Ren's ancestor? Is it me or Carwin's? An ugly daughter-in-law still has to meet her mother-in-law eventually. Despite feeling uneasy, it isn't an option for me to bury this concern of mine in the depths of my heart. In the end, I still pose the question. You don't even know the answer yourself? Alright, it is natural for Kelly to be surprised. I could only shake my head in frustration, pointing at my own head to indicate my memory loss. Suddenly, a crestfallen expression appears on Kelly's face. She lowers her head and starts to rebuke me tearfully. It's enough for you to forget me. To think you would even forget our child. Our child, our child, our child. These two words echo simultaneously in my head and in this room. Kaka, Kaka. Diana's cup and my cup shatters upon contact with the floor. Our gaping mouth couldn't be closed no matter what. Clang dang. At the same, 
Rand loses her grip on her sword. She also stares in shock at the big sister who brought her up. It can't be that her ancestor would actually be her children. Then, should she be calling her grandmother? I'm just joking. I'm completely at a loss. The scariest part about losing one's memory is that one wouldn't know that they forgot. Could it be that I unknowingly forgot my own wife? Un. I'm just joking. I'm still unmarried. Kelly sticks at her tongue and makes a face. Don't just look at how she is 700 years old. For the wood elves who are blessed with a long lifespan, she could only be considered a young lady. Furthermore, the wood elves are known to be positive. Kaka. This time, even the saucer holding the cup crashes. I lay paralyzed on the chair while grabbing onto my chest. These sudden blows are really bad for my heart. I finally understand why the records on Kelly on the diaries would be so contradictory. Although she is gentle like a big sister and a mother, she is overly obsessed with pulling pranks and sometimes, it could be fatal. Never give her any chances or you will regret it. Never. On this section, I even left an asterisk to indicate that it is important information. I almost believed it, you know. Can you not joke about these matters? Alright, I admit that I totally believed what she said. Actually, I also don't quite know myself. Back then, when both sides were crossing fire. I returned back to Xuanglu Forest. When I returned, there was already no one I could recognize there. However, she should either be a descendant of you or Carwins. In any case, she is a descendant of Mist and besides, after a few hundred years, the bloodline should be very diluted by this point, so does it make a difference? TL, Xuanglu, greater than Melody. The pronunciation should be S-H-A-N-L-U-E, around there. There is a great difference. The difference is whether I am a 300-year-old well-qualified archmage or not. Alright, saying this would mean self-exposing my scandal, as well as that my love life hasn't progressed a single step in the past 300 years. I am not that foolish. It should be Carwin's. After all, compared to you, that child is. There is no need to elaborate further on it. I know that Carwin's is more popular than me but please stop rubbing salt on my wounds. Then. The familiar body scent starts closing in on me and big sister Kelly hugs me once more. If you're missing your beautiful memories, then we just have to create more of them. I love my cute little Roland the most. Despite having just reunited, I was already hugged three times. Instantly, I understood what the side note of beware of being treated as a bolster means. Big sister Kelly, I'm no longer a little kid. I'm a little touched by her excessive warmth, but even more so. What I felt is being at a loss. After all, of the beautiful ladies that I came into contact with in the past, half of them were trying to kill me while the other half was hiding daggers beneath their smiles. A beautiful lady hugging me with kind intention, it was something that has never happened before. On the contrary, it left me with no idea how to react to it. Suddenly, Kelly laughs evilly and edges forward. Then, she sticks at her tongue and licks my ear lightly. The sudden soft sensation on my ear caused my entire body to shiver in an instant. Then, feeling lightheaded, I quickly retreated. You, what did you do? Even without looking into a mirror, I know that my face is definitely intensely red at this moment. This time, I have been completely exposed. Despite having the exact same reaction as in the past, you still claim that you aren't a kid anymore. After so many years. It looks like the love life of little Roland is still a complete blank. I have seen the time distortion ring of the saint before. We wood elves are the elves who are the most sensitive to life. Ascertaining the age of an ancient tree through touching it is the most basic race talent of our race. Judging from the smell, your actual age is different from that your outer appearance shows. Do you need me to guess your real current age? I clasp my hand together and raise them to indicate my surrender. Normally. I am the one who land others into trouble. Today, I managed to meet someone who is able to subdue me totally. Is this the experience of an elder? But again, it was so easy for me to trick the Queen of Banshees. HMPH, stop underestimating others. I watched you grow since you were still a baby. Those little tricks of yours are useless against me. It looks like it isn't just the difference in ages and experiences. What is even more crucial is her understanding towards me while my understanding towards her only stops at data and books. Suddenly, seemingly unhappy with my sudden gaze of wariness, she hugs me once more. Just when I was looking warily at this woman who loves to prank others, I heard a whimper from the back of my ear. On my shoulders, 
Kelly starts to sob once more. Too much, smelly Len Land. To actually forgive me. To think that I have been missing you all along, worried about you and yet, you only talk about official business with me. Don't you know how to care for me? Let me hug you for a moment, just a moment. Woo you you you, stupid Len Land. Hearing the sobbing behind my back, I was left motionless yet again. Different emotions filled me in an instant and yet, I am still at a loss of how to react. I can ascertain now that this woman who is like a mother and a teacher is definitely the nemesis of my life. I would rather solo an evil dragon than to guess what she will do the next second. In the end, I could only helplessly allow her to do as she please. Just this one hug. She hugged me for an entire 10 minutes. Little Roland is also around the age which you can become an adult. If it is Roland, I am okay with it. Even after she finally let go of me, the casual and flirtatious jokes makes one unsure of whether she is being sincere or not. However, looking at the green-haired elf who is smiling from the depths of her heart despite her swollen eyes from all the crying, I found another reason for me to continue trying hard. Then, 10 minutes later, a sudden blaze overwhelms the temporary embassy of the East Mist communal country. It seems to be the actions of the extremists who are unhappy with the Princess Knight rejecting Darso's proposal. Twenty minutes later, escorted by a team of East Mist royal knights, the princess and her court mentor found a new living quarters, the third story of a western mansion. Welcome to the base of the mercenary band Absolute Gentleman Alliance. We will provide you the most reliable security and the most caring customer service. Big sister, older brother etc. all seems so awkward, would you all prefer me to use Gia, May, D, G in this cases? When I keep using big brother big sister, it makes it seem as though all of the characters are little kids. Also, there are different variations to the big brother big sister and depending on the variation, the tone are different. For example, when Annie calls other people, she goes with the full term GGG, which makes her seem young. On the other hand, Adults normally go with a more casual one like Kelly Gia, which shows her seniority and the closeness of their relationship. Chapter 87, Sacred Sword and Demon Sword Is this the sacred artifact you are talking about? Even before sunrise, the great-great-great-granddaughter of a certain someone, kicked a certain someone out of bed. Is this a rebellion? What are you doing when the sky has yet to light up? Due to several reasons yesterday. I wasn't able to sleep last night. Just when I was about to drift off, I was awakened abruptly, so in this instant, I am extremely angry. This is the sacred artifact that you gave me. Look at it yourself. Sacred artifact? It may sound like a high-end top quality good, but it is just a unique object infused with God powers. For example, a cup filled with God blood, a wooden spear that pierced through a certain god's heart and a shroud a certain god used before. A sacred artifact of a certain true god is often an object that the true god has used before he ascended. If a worshipper were to come into contact with it, they would be able to deepen their contact with the true god and increase the god powers swiftly. They are the treasures of every church. Naturally, I have a large amount of these sacred artifacts for the god of law. After being appraised by the system. A large portion of those that can be used were left at Luang Mountain City for the worshippers to use. I also kept a few pieces with me and now that Tren has changed her job into a Justice Knight, I casually passed one over to her. To think that she would be complaining over it early in the morning. Isn't this good? It's a sacred pillow with a Pikachu picture on it, isn't it cute? Ah, you don't know the famous Lightning Mouse. Let me tell you, it is a cartoon picture that I designed. Look. Its cheeks are red and its entire body is yellow, don't you think that it's cute? Who cares about your lightning mouse? Saliva, it's the saliva. The back of your sacred artifact is full of your saliva. Halfway through my sleep, I accidentally got some on my face. Disgusting. Wumians's pillow, sacred artifact. Due to Wumians's usage of this object over a long period of time, this pillow is already infused with his aura. By coming into contact with it during sleep, Connection with the true god Wumians can be deepened, increasing the rate of increase of power of law. Receiving the pillow, I flip it over and there is really saliva on the back. After hesitating on a moment, I flipped it back and went back to sleep without a care in the world. HMPH, I'll use it since you don't want it. I haven't been sleeping well since I left this pillow. Yes, 
The reason why I have been insomniac isn't because of a certain someone staying up for the night assault that has yet to come, but because of him losing the pillow that he's used to. Oi, wake up. It's time for morning training as well. What other sacred artifacts do you have? Do you really take the sacred artifacts of a true god to be like cabbage that you can just pluck on the street? However, I do have a few of them here. You definitely would reject the sacred red scarf. Do you want the sacred toothbrush? No. What about sacred cloth? Oi oi, don't get happy too early. I knew that you would misunderstand. It isn't those western armor types but a nickname for the sacred bathrobe. Furthermore, it is a pink colored one. TL, Saint C a big brother Roland, no matter what, you are a legendary hero. I grew up listening to your heroic deeds. So, can you be more reliable? Does it make sense for a female like me to be walking around wearing a male bathrobe? Fine, I still have another sacred artifact here. It is definitely the top one in maintaining your connection with Woomans. Furthermore, you won't find it excessive wearing it and it isn't striking as well. It's definitely easy and good to use. If it's that good, why didn't you take it out earlier? Where is it? Take it yourself. Thus, I flipped open my blanket and continued snoring in my sleep. Where is it? Big Brother Roland, can you tell me? Lowering her tone when she has a favor to ask while acting haughty normally, it's quite easy to grasp the temper of this princess. However, she obviously lacks education. Isn't this it? Sacred underwear, take it yourself. You can wear it inside. It is neither excessive nor striking. Furthermore, you get physical contact with Woomans, so I can guarantee that your connection would be intimate. You old sex fiend, sexually harassing me again, eat my sin splitting strike. All right. Having just changed jobs a day prior, her sin-splitting strike still wasn't up to standard and only had the spirit to it. Thus, after taking care of her in an instant, I dragged her down for morning training. A new day starts with a certain unrespectable old man educating her little granddaughter to launch a sneak attack on this old man. 20,000 swings today, no dinner if you don't finish it. Practice seriously. What are you old man ing for? You want to play seniority? Big sister Kelly has told me that you aren't as old as me yet. I only call you big brother Roland in view of your little reputation in the past. Otherwise, he he, little Roland, do you want a lollipop? This delinquent young lady apparently lacks education. You really need a beating. Now, practice your swings. If you can't finish 30,000 by today, you will be punished with no dinner or night snack tonight. Just watch and see if your big sister Kelly will plead on your behalf. Don't, big sister Kelly may seem gentle but in reality, when it involves classes, she turns into a ghastly old granny, extremely aggressive and scary. Ghastly old granny is at your back. Do you think you can fool me with such a simple trick? If that fierce bitch were here, I would have long heard her footstep. Recently, She's been getting a little overweight. Who is pulling on my ears? TL, bitch seems a bit over the top. Is there any word that is milder but still an insult? Cough. It seems that I'm a ghastly old granny and a fierce bitch. To think I would worry you over my health problems. Looks like princess, you need some remedial lessons on social etiquette and hygiene. Please head to the second floor for lessons after you end your swordsmanship training. Bastard Roland, you tricked me. Now you're blaming me? I raised my head innocently in the end, but I was smiling gleefully. Dash dash, I want a good sword. I'm serious. Although I want to look for a good weapon, I ended up arguing with my cat. The solo assault on the thief band a few days ago was unplanned but within my expectations. I still require an opponent to test my skills at this point. After trying out the new battle style and discovering its strengths, I also discovered its weakness. Being forced to use my amateur skills on the sparring field the other day, I was forced to face this flaw. Demon Sword, the Scarlet Conqueror attack power colon 30 to 50 plus 9, plus 9 additional damage due to it being a plus 9 legend equipment. Even if the sword deals damage of the lower limit, it will deal additional 9 unavoidable bloodthirst damage. Blood Conquer. This demon sword has five forms. Depending on the amount of people who have fallen under the user's hands, a number of forms would be usable. For every new form unlocked, an additional special skill would be added. The highest and lowest damage would be increased by 10 points. Currently, it is a tier 3. The Rage of the Bloodthirster, 
After activating this skill, the blood of all life form will be absorbed to deal a large amount of damage while recovering the stamina of the user. The poison fangs of the cold blooded, those who are struck by the weapon will be afflicted by a bleeding status that cannot be stopped. The damage dealt by the bleeding status can be stacked infinitely. The curse of the filthy blooded, using the blade as the core, create an impure field. Everyone on the field will suffer the pain of their blood boiling. There is a string of tiny blood dried words on the hilt of the sword, this demon sword craves for fresh blood and slaughter at all moments, regardless whether the fresh blood is from your enemy or it originates from you. When Darso's handed me this demon sword, I was really hesitating over the success rate of managing to escape with this treasure, especially with the enticement of the demon sword. My temporary master, the amount of fresh blood and souls you harvested with your hands is at least a hundred times greater than the fool. Darso's, here. Of my ten recent owners, only the great you are able to use my final form. That would be a hundred times stronger than my current form. However, as a price, you need to offer me the fresh blood of ten thousand people within a year. A large portion of demon swords are the creation of devils and demons. Those who wield demon swords normally need to pay a heavy price and few of them end well. Equal exchange has always been the common rule in the world. After paying a heavy price, the strength that one earns would be fearsome as well. The tier 3 form of the Scarlet Conqueror is already comparable to the semi-god role in Sacred Sword. If it was evolved to its final form, it is unimaginable how strong it would be. Probably, a god equipment would also only be that strong. However, if a tier 5 demon sword requires the fresh blood tribute of 10,000 people, then a tier 3, it should be around 100. Furthermore, if the user is unable to pay the price, he would have to use his own fresh blood to pay the price. 100 people in a year, 1 in 3 days, Darso's is probably busy with his blood ritual. Back then, I rejected it. If it were to really be converted to its final form, then it would be difficult to explain how I managed to meet the prerequisites required for the transformation, not to mention the heavy price I would have to pay later on. However, as a swordsman, given the overwhelming power and special abilities of the demon sword, how could I not be moved? I am really lacking good weapons. As a master in swordsmanship, to think that I would be stuck with two poor quality iron dual handed swords. It is really hard to stand such a reality. After using both the demon sword and sacred sword, now that I see the trend being able to barely wield the role in sacred sword, which is getting stronger and stronger, while I am still stuck with two iron swords which don't even amount to 10 gold coins together, I feel a strong sense of depression. Meow, if you want a sword, you should look for a blacksmith. Why are you asking meow meow me? It's hard to look the queen of banshees straight in the eye when she is getting worse and worse with her acting cute and playing the fool. At this instant, she is licking her paws. Stop feigning ignorance, you know why I'm looking for you. We're both old foxes, so there's no need to play the type of games youngsters play. Tell me, are there any godly weapons nearby? Meow, none at all. Though, I have two sharp fishbone blades that I left behind from yesterday. If you want them, I can pass them to you. Hey, I knew it would end up like this. Thus, I made some preparations in advance. Alright, it can't be helped then. Meow, this isn't like you, for you to give up. Un, I can't possibly make one appear out of nowhere. Since I don't have any, I will make one myself. Harlois is a little bit surprised. She knows that the person in front of her is a prodigy in undead creation but she never heard that he was able to do smithing. Meow, you can even make weapons? Wait, roll in the mist, my good disciple, what do you intend to do? Soon after, she understood. Like a demon, Roland wore a white robe, mask and glasses. His eyes were filled with passionate sparks and in the test tubes and bottles in his hands. Numerous bizarre fluids were flowing. You should have heard of the legends. The gold element slime can turn into an iron bat or some kind of weapon. Even more so, a gold element slime king is able to turn into a legendary godly weapon. Since you are already a slime, changing a bit of your element and adding a bit of functions should mean nothing, right? Right your head. Don't pour those things into my body, not even the tweezers. A drill? Too big. Do you want to kill me? All right. Under the threat of her life, Harlois finally didn't have the leisure to continue acting cute. I surrender, 
I surrender. I'll tell you where you can look for godly weapons so please take away your drill. TSK. What are you TSKing for? Are you that regretful? Do you really want to stab and drill around my body, you unfilial disciple? Alright, facing the complaining Harl Ois, I raised my drill and test tubes once more and she immediately turns obedient once more. There is really one nearby that you're able to use. Do you know Pale Justice? The sacred sword that legend Holy Knight Cain once used. He is an Olander and his descendants should be in this city. I won't elaborate more on it. Sacred sword huh? I was overjoyed, this is a reward beyond my expectations. In the Ike continent, sacred swords actually refers to swords that are divine and pure. However, if we return back to reality, there are often two types of sacred sword. The first type is the sword of protection that represents a certain area, country, race or family. Indubitably, the role in sacred sword lies under this category. The second type refers to treasured sword which had a pure soul infused into it. Often, this is a right exclusive to holy knights. In reality, the order gods open a back door for their servants. When a holy knight dies with an unwillingness to stop in his pursuit to eliminate the chaos faction, he is able to infuse a portion of his strength and soul into a weapon for the usage of his descendants. Just like that. A pure god sword slash sacred hammer is born. The restriction for usage normally only allows holy knight to wield them. At the same time, the sacred sword is extremely powerful against chaos life forms. Why do I say that this is the back door left behind by the gods? That's because other jobs have tried the same but never succeeded. Unless one turns into an undead spirit, otherwise the order gods and river sticks would never let a single soul of the dead go. To be able to receive news on the sacred sword, naturally, I am extremely happy. Thus, when Harlois heaves a sigh of relief. I raise up my drill once again. What do you intend to do? Didn't I tell you the location of the sacred sword? You intend to go back on your decision, you untrustworthy conman. Firstly, I didn't promise you anything from the start. Helping you upgrade is one of my agendas of the day. Secondly, I just got addicted to reforming things and am unable to quench my passion. Finally, and more importantly, I'm a dual blade wielder, how can one sword be sufficient for me? The foolish cat immediately as she reflects on how she was caught so easily every time. Can it be true that one's physical body will affect one's intelligence? No, didn't I still manage to trick you in the past? Intelligence is something that you were born with, you should give in to your fate by now. Don't even think about it. From anger to sadness, from sadness to agitation, I never get bored of Harloy's expressions when she falls into the pit I dug. Perhaps. This is the main reason why I like to trick her. This is my territory, no one can save you even when you scream out your throat. So, just give in. No, take the white oily fluid away from me. You damned pervert, why are there tentacles? Could it be that the legendary book of erotic fantasy is really with you? Save me, someone is torturing cats. Chapter 88, The Rules of God and Laws of Human Ouch. Darned cat, it's you again. Recently, Rowland seems to have fallen out with his cat. Whenever his guard is down, his cat would immediately pounce towards him and conduct a chain combo with her claws and fangs. During this period of time, she would often wear slippers on her paws to conceal her presence and close in on him before assaulting him like a fierce wild beast. What made it worse is that there isn't any killing intent whatsoever before she strikes and her movements are fast, accurate and vicious causing Rowland to howl in agony multiple times. If it occurred during normal occasions, it would definitely cause a great cat-human battle to immediately occur. However, now isn't the appropriate time for such a farce to happen. Lord Rowland, if you are unable to keep your cat under control, then please play with it outside. On the podium, Crow stares furiously at me through her glasses, frustrated, I could only grab Harlois by her neck bestow upon her four to five full rounds before throwing her out of the window while she's still weak from the dizziness. That's too much. How can he treat animals with such cruelty? The cat will fall to its death. Cassio, who is growing more and more fond of animals, exclaims in indignation but I simply shake my head in response. Good people don't live long but disasters live for a thousand years. If she can die that easily, then she should have been dead several times centuries back then. As expected, Harlois's curses and complaints come echoing through our telepathic connection. Darned unfilial disciple, 
to treat the great and noble queen of banshees like that. Just wait and see, I will leave scars on your pillow and... After hesitating for a split moment, the damn cat finally releases the most vicious and immoral curse in her entire life. I will leave urine on your pillow and bed sheets. I will carry out my words. I am only a cat now, so don't expect me to be unable to do it. I don't care anymore. Since I said it, I will definitely accomplish it. Then, I will wrap up that pillow and bed sheet then post it to our old acquaintances in Zayuo Empire. I will put a picture of your current form on top of the package and label the wit portion as the secretions of the omniscient one. Do you think I should post it to your fervent followers so that they can worship it or should I post it to your enemies for them to hold a gallery and celebrate over it? I'm wrong, I swear that I won't do it. I'll go practice transforming into a weapon now. This is the part of Harlois that I like the most. After realizing that she is unable to win, she would admit defeat right away, never pushing her way through forcefully. Perhaps, this is also the main reason why this disaster has been able to live for a few thousand years. HMPH, pitting against me, you are still far too tender. Student Roland, since you like to stand so much, I will allow you to stand as you please. Go and stand outside in the hallways. But the next moment, I knew that I still fell for her tricks. Right now, I am in the middle of a lesson. Although I am talking to my magic pet through our telepathic connection, from the perspective of outsiders, I seem like a madman standing in a daze. It just happens that the temporary lecturer Crows is staring furiously at me at the moment. My sudden blank stare became an action that challenges her authority as a lecturer. Thus, I could only obediently stand outside helplessly. Yes. I am currently in a lecture now. The contents of the lecture is about the teachings of the God of Law and Law itself. Naturally, the one taking on the role of the lecturer is Crows, who has the highest power rank of the law jobs here. After that intense fight, the final verdict was to have half of the first floor serve as a court of law, a small church of the God of Law, and after some consideration, a small space was left behind to be used to serve as a church of holy light for Diana and me. As for an animal hospital that a certain someone strongly persisted on, a booth outside the walls would suffice. Anyway, I will never admit that I am acquainted with him. Not only that, I even secretly reported his unlicensed business to the relevant authorities. It is a pity that the town's security of this city couldn't be compared to those of Luang Mountain City. It would be quite a difficult task for them to deal with him. Alright, back to the main topic at hand. Allowing Crows to explain the teachings of the God of Law is her own wish as well as the will of the audiences. Needless to say, Ren and Kelly are listening attentively to the lecture, given that they are still hesitating over whether they should make the faith of the God of Law as their national religion and need to learn more about it. Even Diana and Momo, the two Grey Elves, are strongly insisting on allowing them to hold classes. However, what was most shocking is that Cassio was not only the one who was interested in the faith of the true God which is growing rapidly in the underground world, even that one whose name I refuse to speak of is unexpectedly interested in the faith of the God of Law as well. I still want to return to Luwang Mountain City. I believe that this new rising faith will spread to the corners of the world and as a man who dreads on the boundary of law. I have to first understand my adversary and the loopholes in it before challenging it. A certain Draken seems to resemble more and more like a philosopher recently. His words made me wonder if a new ideology will be born as a result of such a ludicrous reason. However, we don't have any reason to reject him from learning about the law and besides, from the looks of the past two days, it seems that he is the one who is listening the most seriously to the lectures. At the same time. The group of royal knights who accompanied Ren to the All and Empire were listening into the lecture as well. A few of them were already considering whether they should job change to become a Justice Knight. Even though this is just the second day of the lecture, we already had two new audiences, Svenity Nelson and Raymond Lon Nelson. Due to a certain accident, the elder sister became the love rival of the Emperor causing her landlord to kick the two siblings out from their rented dwelling without any hesitation. After meeting with Blockade and everything they set out to do, Svena soon realized that even though Ond may be big, there isn't anywhere here that could shelter them. In this world which is in the feudal era of the human society, the interests of knights and the lord they are serving are firmly connected. If one of them falls, both of them will suffer together whereas if one of them prospers, 
both of them will prosper together. Less needs to be spoken about guardian knights. Actually, there are also guardian knights of the same sex as their master and they are often intimate friends who would give out their life for the other. But, the relationship between Svina and Ren isn't that easy to explain. A knight who betrays the one they swore loyalty to are the type of knight that are despised the most. Helpless, she could only acknowledge that she was stuck on the same boat as Ren and seek refuge with her. However, watching at how she would run away frightened whenever Ren approaches her. Those who are aware of the backstory would clutch their stomach in laughter. As a top-notch preacher, Crows's voice is extremely charming and her understanding of the teachings are quite firm. For normal imparting of knowledge, she is more than qualified. However, facing Kelly and the 700 years of experience behind her, who also has to fully understand this faith to judge if it is beneficial to her country. The wild elf who is one generation younger than the wood elf noble often find herself unable to handle the situation. Then, can you explain why singular law would be split into two parts, rules of God and laws of human and what is the difference between them? There are quite a few portions that overlap between both of them. Going by the common knowledge of jurisprudence, won't overlaps or even contradictions in the law cause chaos in the enforcement and the weakening of its authority? But, but that is what is taught in the teachings. That is set by Lord Wumians. It can't be wrong. Being forced to a corner, Crows can only repeat the theories written on the book. Normally, this level of imparting of knowledge which teaches of the results but not the causes that derives it is sufficient, but apparently, it is insufficient to convince that East Miss Court mentor. No way around it. I shake my head and walk back into the hall that is being used for this lecture. Cough, if possible. Allow me to explain. I am acquainted with Lord Wumians and I happen to have heard him talk about it before. Looks of confusion could be seen on the faces of the crowd. I point one of my finger upwards and the silver glow of the light of lore ripples above it, indicating my identity as one with a law job. It is impossible to train in two types of powers simultaneously. If someone were to convert all of their power of holy light into the power of law like what Momo did it would be equivalent to starting anew. Fortunately, there are a few overlaps between the two powers but even so, if one were to work on both of them together, it would be a waste of effort. Thus, other than crows who muttered as expected of the gods oracle in approval of my identity as a justice knight, in the mind of the others, they were thinking that I was expending my effort on something fruitless. Anyway, this itself proves that I am qualified to lecture on law. Cough. Firstly, I will talk about the difference between the rules of God and laws of human. The rules of God is fixed by our God. It consists of only 13 severe crimes which are commonly accepted to be unpardonable sins and basically, it is unchangeable. The sins that can be judged by the judgment spell of the law jobs consist only of those of the rules of God. On the other hand, the laws of human are laws that would be continuously changed by the church of law and is tied together with the jurisdiction and the monarch. The rules of God is applicable to the area of jurisdiction of the order gods whereas the laws of humans is only applicable with the approval of the monarch. This is the main difference between the two. The other gods also have commandments like punish evil, banning extravagance and forbidding lies but it is often a difficult task to enforce punishment on people who are not their worshippers. My version of the 13 severe crimes are commonly accepted and thus, there is no need to fear for the ire of other gods, nobles or royalty. At the same time, it gives those assuming law jobs a list of sins that they must eliminate. It doesn't matter whether other people enforce it or not but justice knights must enforce it. However, this doesn't mean that the two of them will conflict with one another. On the other hand, the both of them are representative of the same thing. The rules of God is the lower limit of the laws of human. Since they are sins that rules of God forbids, then the laws of human mustn't pardon the sinners. For example, the first of the 13 crimes claiming the life of others willfully to fulfill one's private desires will result in a strict verdict by the God of law. Even after death, they would suffer in the mountain of blades and sea of flames. The laws of human also have the corresponding clause. The first clause of intentional murder states that intentional murder would result in the death penalty or imprisonment of minimum 10 years. However, if it is legitimate defense, in a war of justice or for any other reasons that are in conflict with the other clauses, the latter clause will be prioritized. Despite it being the same crime, 
but the God of law brought about a tone of a religion advising against certain behaviors. As for the final portion which may seem excessive, further punishment after death, in actuality, it is preparation for the future. On the other hand, the laws of human are ice cold clauses and sentences. Wren starts to get a little agitated. She seems to have seen the complex value behind it. That is to say, those of the law jobs only have to enforce sins that go against the rules of God. If so, what is the significance of setting the laws of human? That is prepared for countries and lords that are prepared to allow the faith of the God of law to become their national religion. This laws of human would obviously infringe on the profits of the nobles in the region, so aren't you all afraid of them banding together to suppress the spreading or even push for the banning of your faith? Kelly questions after deliberating for a moment. She has been living in the human society for quite a significant period of time, so she understood the corruption and hopelessness of those bunch of nobles. How could they accept the introduction of laws that would threaten their rule? I smile. This is also one of the consideration that I expected them to have. Indeed, in many places, nobles only pay one gold coin for beating up ordinary civilians and some royals even confiscate the properties of merchants as they please. Are these vile laws that support only the governing body acceptable? Our laws of humans will infringe on their profits directly and so, being viewed with enmity and even being suppressed at the start is unavoidable. However, it is impossible for them to ban it. After all, our Wu means is a true God. Banning the teachings of a true God is equivalent to revolting against all of the order gods. Why do you think Wu means had to try so hard for his ascension? It is all for this day. However, it is meaningless if it just prevents them from banning the religion. So, there is a need for someone to make a stand. If I am an ordinary civilian and merchant, on one hand is a set of vile laws that view me like an animal and a slave while the other at least allows me the basic rights of a human, so where would I choose to live and work hard in? Actually, there is no need to hesitate and Luang Mountain City is an ideal example. A large influx of population and resources would naturally bring about prosperity and power. This is required for any territory. Thus. The faith of the God of law is actually beneficial to the development of any territories and we just need someone to make a stand. So, you looked for the missed country, little Roland, you would actually pull your own people into a pit you dug. Haven't you considered the high possibility of turning hostile with the surrounding states after turning it into the national religion? Have you considered the possibility of being wiped out even before we rise up? Kelly frowned as she spoke. Her considerations were legitimate. Of course, I have considered it. However, do you think that the East Mist country won't attract hostility if it goes on like this? You are already surrounded by enemies on all fronts and since it isn't far from destruction, at least this is quite a good straw of hope to clutch onto. Also, if the God of Law becomes the national religion, then using Luang Mountain City as an example, the rapid development of the strength of the nation can be expected. A large increase in the amount of justice knights and judgmenters would also significantly improve the ability of the country to defend itself. At the same time, it should be able to gain the assistance of the land of origin of law, Luang Mountain City. No matter how you look at it, its benefits is greater than the detriments it brings. What if we still refuse to accept it? Nothing. Just continue to wait. When those of the law jobs fill the entire world, when the teachings of the God of law become widespread in this world, the accumulated resentment and conflicts will finally explode one day. By then, what is awaiting the nobles will not be a peaceful retirement. The guillotine will be washed with fresh blood until it turns rusty and hanging corpses will fill the gallows. Kelly instinctively shivers, as though seeing the arrival of such a day. On the other hand, Ren brings up her considerations. Going by the teachings, starting a war is a severe crime. If so, doesn't this mean that we would be unable to unify the missed country? Isn't this unfair for us? No, although it is true that starting a war will cause those of the law jobs to lose their power of law, helping allied countries who are being invaded and wars of justice such as to recover annex land are still allowed. Then, who would decide what is justice? Bei Ifeng who had been solemnly jotting down notes brings up a query for the first time and he managed to shoot right on the bull's eye. One vote by the god of law Wu Mians, one vote by the monarch of the country and one vote by the majority of the population. If all three votes are in approval of the war, then the war can be considered just. Also, 
since Wu means has turned in the incarnation of justice, then his judgment should be fair and acceptable by his worshippers. The questioner nods his head and sits back down. Then, new questions from the crowd starts popping up once again. I have a question. Un, this is actually quite simple. Initially, I only intended to just casually filling in on a bit of details but some things cannot be stopped once started. This lecture which is fated to be recorded in the annals of history continued for an entire day. Crows, who was lecturing the class initially, became the recorder. What she tried her best to record down would be eventually passed on to the hands of every worshipper. I can foresee that not too long from now, the flower of law will bloom beautifully. In the end, the lecture turned into a debate and the debate turned back into a lecture. When the marathon imparting of teachings finally ended, Ren and Kelly stare at each other before coming to a final conclusion. The East Mist communal country decides to acknowledge the faith of the God of Law as our national religion. But you, Roland, must be responsible to help us to the end. Sigh, fine, I will treat it as returning what I owe you all. Even though I was complaining. The smile on the face couldn't escape the notice of anyone. TL, waste of effort, greater than, what I am trying to express is, getting less than proportionate returns compared to the effort you put in. Couldn't find an appropriate phrase to explain the Chinese one. Just curious, has anyone realized what Roland's goal is? Chapter 89 Arbitration and justice still the same simple and shabby palace along with the same young emperor. Darsos is engaged in a battle of chess with his old friend and subordinate. But, looking at the lapses in judgment, missteps and how he was being forced to retreat continuously, his thoughts are clearly not on the chessboard. On other days, he would swiftly wipe the floor with his old friend with his superior chess skills before talking about official matters while the other party is still wallowing in his depression. But this time, his usual calmness is absent. Hermit, have you found her yet? Found? Oh, you mean that Prince's Knight? They changed their dwelling and currently, they are living in the Church of the God of Law. Attacking the Church of a true God can bring about great troubles. For a woman, is it worth it? The one speaking is a brunette youngster with squinty eyes. With a monocle, he emits a scholarly feeling. Simply by looking at just his outer appearance, no one would suspect that he is the head of intelligence of the Auland Empire, as well as the private financial advisor of the Emperor, making him one of the most powerful men in the Empire. Stop joking with me, you know that I am not looking for that little lass. I am looking for the girl with the bloodline of the angels. The woman who single-handedly subdued the demon sword using brute force. With his attention to detail, Darsos could tell that Svina is a woman with one glance. After that day, he started that guess that the princesses with the identical faces but totally different auras may be two different people. The twin stars, yet another ominous twins. No wonder the Miss Royalty would hide her existence. All right, corroborating with history. There is a foundation for the story Darsos came up with. At least, in Darsos's eyes, they are definitely two different people. The most obvious evidence is the behavior of the demon sword. Hermit, you should know the price I pay to awaken the third form of the Scarlet Conqueror. But, that woman could easily subdue the third form of the demon sword. What's worse, when she returned the demon sword to me, the feelings that the demon sword transmitted back to me was actually pity fear and relaxation. There could only be one explanation, the demon sword has actually submitted completely to her. It is very possible that she can even use the demon sword in its final form. Impossible. The scarlet conqueror that was forged by the tyrant of the blood sea will crave for fresh blood eternally. In order to use this sword, almost 10,000 lives have disappeared under your hands. Even today, we have to prepare a few hundred death row prisoners to pay tribute to the sword. The girl is still so young, how could she subdue the demon sword? But she still managed to do it, didn't she? Is that why you proposed to her? Not wavering in the least despite being rejected in public? No, no. I had enough of those beautiful but fragile vases. I suddenly felt that a blood angel that is showered in fresh blood is also not bad. I am really smitten by her. However, I didn't expect that she would actually like women, it is really such a pity. You intend to give up? Then why are you still looking for her? Why do you think the Miss Royalty is hiding that trump card for? Do you think that they, 
who are holding such a chip in their hands, would obediently submit to me during my enthronement ceremony. Do you think that the proud half-angel who refuses to look me in my eye would kneel and swear loyalty to me on the day of the ceremony? Recalling the sight of the proud war angel who refuses to even allow her feet to touch the ground, Hermit shakes his head. From birth, some people refuse to yield to others. I don't think that she would ever submit to anyone. But, we don't have any route to retreat to. It is either we carry this through or give up the plan and be reduced to a second-rate power. Yes, the enthronement ceremony that forces the countries to submit to all and emperor is an oppression towards the smaller countries as well as a challenge to the all and empire's prestige and power. If they succeed, they could become a superpower at one go. But, if they were to fail, then the subordinate states under them originally will start to waver and falling straight to become a second-rate power isn't entirely impossible. This is a bet with great stakes at hand. It involves the fate of all and 200 years from now. We can't afford to lose. I understand, we can't allow for any variables at this point. I will send spies to investigate the secret of the East Mist. No. Hold it for a moment. Just send a few Magic Eagle Riders to keep an eye on them would be suffice. I have already sent out the crows, it would be inconvenient for them to strike with our eyes firmly on them. The crows? Why, they aren't trustworthy at all. They are just a bunch of oversensitive lunatics who keep prophesying about the ludicrous end of the world all day long. But, irrational mad dogs tend to bite the hardest. Saying these, Darso's burst into laughter. Naturally, he knows that the crows aren't reliable. But, even mad dogs have their own use. If it is just releasing them out in the public to bite others, then there is no need for them to have any rationality. I think I understand why you called me here. Un, with the East Mist communal country as a variable at the core, do a few more emergency contingency plan. Do we have to prepare for the worst? The East Mist communal country being removed from the Alliance. No, the worst possibility is the East Mist communal country along with the other countries declaring war on us while our military forces are being kept in check. Hermit nods his head. He understands Darso's. Preparing for the worst in all scenarios is his die-hard habit but this doesn't mean that he doesn't have the confidence to follow through with the enthronement ceremony. On the other hand, preparing so many contingency plans in advance means that he has his eyes firmly set on the success of the alliance. Other people might think that he is a crude ambitious man who pays no attention to little details but only the companion who he grew up with comprehends that the greatest strength of Darso's is his attentiveness to details. Perhaps, it is because he is always prepared for the worst situation that he is able to climb his way up a step at a time to the top. Don't panic. Even chess requires one to move step by step to claim victory. Let's first use the mad dogs to test their might. Ha, looks like you got distracted. Check, I won. Dash 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 making the ambassadors of the East Mist communal country live with us wasn't a nameless sudden inspiration on my part. It is still three months away from the enthronement ceremony. It isn't a long period of time but it couldn't be considered short as well. Being in the capital, his own field. It would be inconceivable if Darsos doesn't play some little tricks to rebuild the reputation he lost. Besides, our connection with the ambassadors would grow more and more intimate. Rather than being looked with gazes of suspicion by others, we might as well directly link up together. This way, not only is it more convenient and safer, I can also discipline that little lass. As for the Church of the God of Law, it can only be said to be an unexpected surprise. Initially, we only intend to build a core to allow those of the law jobs to train and learn in. Without the support of the ruler of the territory, we are unable to conduct judgment on others. We could only engage in arbitration work. Judgment requires the support of the ruler, and involves someone using the clauses of law from a higher position to judge the criminals of a lower position and force a verdict on them. On the other hand, Arbitration is a process where the arbitrator is of equal position as the two people involved in the contract and a ruling would be made by the arbitrator. Indubitably, in places where law isn't recognized by the ruler of the territory, the law jobs can only do arbitration jobs. Due to the lack of authority in an arbitration, arbitrators require significantly deeper understanding of the law. In a certain world, one has to work at least eight years in the law industry before there is a possibility of them conducting an arbitration. Of course, 
we are talking about bigger affairs in that sense. In actuality, most of them involve insignificant little matters. Aunt Lee, Uncle Lee only owes you three silver coins right? Since he said he will be returning to you in two months, calm down. Two months? Considering the interest, he has to pay me at least four silver coins two months later. Three and a half. Four. All right, let me be the middle man. Give him a little bit more time, Andy Lee, then Uncle Lee can pay a little bit more on the interest. How about four silver coins for three months? Deal. Okay. Although it may seem lame, this is basically what arbitrators do. The only difference is the sum of money involved in the settlement and that whether the both parties are an individual, merchant guild or organization. Of course, if both parties are still unable to come to a compromise, then the arbitrator can conduct a forced arbitration in front of Idol of God Womans. If so, there would definitely be one side whose interest would be harmed. Under such circumstances, the decision of the arbitration will be enforced by Womians' God powers. Without the monarch backing it the law, the law enforcers won't have the authority to judge criminals and naturally, they won't have the right to enforce verdicts on others. However, as one has the freedom to make contracts and promises, the law jobs could borrow Wumians's god powers and his obligation to serve as an arbitrator for the affairs of the mortal world. The arbitration system has already been operating for decades in Luhuang Mountain City. But on the surface, it is something new. Very quickly, the sensitive merchants realize the superiority of such a system. Its greatest advantage that it is fast, very fast. On other days, Heading to the local jurisdiction to file a complaint about a contract or settle a disagreement over goods would take at least one or two years to settle. Even if they were to earn the settlement sum after winning the battle, they might very well be bankrupt by then. That is the typical case of winning the lawsuit but losing one's livelihood. Furthermore, if it involves a certain noble or official in the lawsuit, then you just have to give in to your misfortune. An arbitration only involves the three sides who are involved in the case and an agreement can be striked very swiftly, often in a few days. To merchants, time is life itself, not to mention that no one would dare to refuse to carry out a contract that has been made in front of Wumans. That bizarre incantation of law, Obligatory enforcement leaves those who intend to go against their promise nowhere to hide. Kajersi City, which was built along the river, is extremely accessible, one of the reasons why it is able to become a famous commercial city. In a place where merchants gather, this new way of settling conflicts immediately spread rapidly within the industry. To think that there would be a god to ensure the fairness of a contract, now I don't have to worry about those ruffians withholding payment. This is great. Thus, when new contracts involving trades are signed, they will make sure to add in a line if a disagreement occurs, then arbitration will be held in 20 church of law. Thus, in less than a week, the court found itself gaining a few thousand new worshippers, making it a regional religion. All right, going by the rules of gods, when sufficient worshippers appear in a land, the true god Wumians will start to notice that land. It will come under his sacred jurisdiction. Kajersi City Branch Church of Law is born as a result. When the laws of humans still require a long time before it would acquire the support of the local landlords and walk onto the stage of history, this new rising arbitration system will become a powerful weapon to expand the faith of the true god of law Wumians. Such an occurrence is appearing in many different corners of I continent. Thus, in the realm of gods, Wumians received the first derivative of his obligation the god of contracts. As the essence of fairness is weaved into the contents of a free contract, having weak god powers now, he is gradually evolving to become a mid-tier god. Ah, I totally didn't expect it. Adding the system of arbitration into the law system, I was just casually imitating the law system of my previous world. I didn't expect that the arbitration system that wasn't really significant there would bear flowers in this foreign world. Un. In this chaotic world reminiscent of the Middle Age, there is indeed a great need for a neutral party to guarantee, enforce and settle the disputes of agreements. The reason why it isn't that popular in that is because it still lacks an authoritative power to guarantee that it would be carried out. Even if the result of the arbitration is hard to enforce, in this magical world where true gods that could guarantee the enforcement of the contract exist. Arbitration becomes something much more impressive. Such an unexpected outcome is of course beneficial to me. This accident also made me realize the significance of the bloodline of my physical body as the arbitrator. Chaos on the left, 
order on the right, so I am standing in the middle as the arbitrator. In the end, I would just defend both sides at once. System, are you trying to remind me that my goal is something which my efforts will not reap proportionate rewards? Attacking a regional church, a land where true God gazes upon, the God of law not setting up church refers to it not being like other true gods who throw churches everywhere for the sake of spreading their teachings, is no different from slapping the face of a God. Naturally, as the people staying in it, we would be in a much safer position. Even so, I can still see dozens of spies among the worshippers coming to visit. Hey, this big brother here, it is indeed a good idea for you disguise as a traveling merchant with your big bag. But, can you change your military boots? There is still the insignia of the Flying Dragon Knight Order on it. He he, your family uses such superior horses to ship grass forage? Is the money you earn sufficient to pay for the oat they eat? That mark of noble on your sword. Can you be more professional? To think that you can still laugh about it. All right, regardless of whether it is those who are interested in the East Mist communal country who shone brightly on that day or those who are interested in this rising true God church, the way this city expresses its passion to its guests is really hard to take. Lord Oracle, if you have the time to play with them, you might as well come help us. After the court became a regional church, the most senior crows once again takes the blow and got forced to become the regional archbishop. However, despite being promoted, not only did she not get a pay raise or a new subordinates, on the other hand, her workload exploded. Despite being a small church, the merchants are all rushing here to settle their disputes over their contracts. The average visitors that come each day numbers over a hundred and the queue extends all the way to Bay Ifeng's small booth outside the mansion. As for the people who are receiving them and the arbitrators, two grey elves, Crows and her two subordinates, five people in total, that's all. Although Crows is trying her best to groom the first batch of Divine Art users, they are all starting from scratch and there is still a long way before they are able to handle the situation. Right now, Crows and the rest can only work overtime to try their best to handle the situation. So, even though the respect Crows had for me soared significantly after that lecture, but looking at how I wander about leisurely despite having deep understanding of the law, her rage comes pouring out on me. Lord Oracle, if you are free, can you help look at the contract of the gnome merchants? There are a few parts which I am unsure of and require your assistance. Ha ha, I am busy today. Let's talk about it after I'm back. After throwing those words, I turn around and escape without any hesitation. Crows wanted to chase me but the crowd in front of her makes her stop helplessly. This time, I really am not trying to shirk responsibility. I really have something on today. I have an appointment with someone. The location isn't too far away, a plot of empty land where people are scarce. Standing under a rotting old tree, I lean on it and pour a little wine on the floor. The gray mist gathers to form a silver specter. However, the usual coldness and aggressiveness of a specter is absent. This is someone who is between the existence of a specter and a heroic spirit. Hey, Uncle Kane. I'm here again. I have already settled the problem with your granddaughter. The amount of money I left for her school fees is sufficient for her to use for 10 years. You can give that sword to me now. After receiving Haraloise's hints, I would be too useless if I can't even find my target. In the first day, I found Kane's soul. But, it is a pity that even though I conversed with him over many matters these few days and even helped him on several accounts, Kane still remained silent on the whereabouts of his own sword. Un, little fellow, I can see your sincerity. Let me tell you one last story. If there is a mirror here, my face would definitely be. This specter really acts just like the NPCs in games. I had to do a few missions for him first before he tells me about his background story. Most probably, this story would be about his story and in the end, I would have to enlighten him so that he could move on. The village was threatened by magic beasts. The enemy would overrun his own outpost at any moment. That young knight faced two difficult choices. One is to fulfill his duty to his king by defending his post and watch as the threatened village is destroyed or he could go against his orders and his pride as a knight to protect the village. Youngster, if it was you, how would you choose? All right. I knew that it would be this kind of problem. This kind of question is as unsolvable as the one about who to save when one's wife and mother falls into the water. Not answering might instead be the best answer. However, 
I have done too many of this kind of questions. From the start, the answer isn't of the options given. I will act first. Either finish my mission before going to protect the village or to get rid of those magic beasts who are threatening the villagers first then pull the villagers to help me accomplish my orders. Un. The better option would be to pull all the villagers with me to guard my outpost. This. This doesn't fit the prerequisites. Whose prerequisites? The one coming up with the question? Or the ones you set yourself? As long as the endpoint is good, why should one care so much about the process? No, that is impossible. I can't do those that you just said. I can do what you can't do. To tell you the truth, if I was in your position, the moment signs of a threat from magic beasts appear, I would have thought of ideas to get rid of it as soon as possible before it becomes dangerous. Besides, if you can't do it, you could have asked for others to help you right? They have their own missions. How can I use my own private matters to soil the honor of other knights? That is an outdated idea. No wonder you still aren't enlightened even a few decades later. I, I will test if you are capable of doing what I can't do. The old knight rages from embarrassment. All right, as expected, I had to fight him in the end. 19 seconds. Including the time required to draw and sheath my sword. The undead binding formation that I have long set activates and I immediately followed up with a standard holy knight skill, turn undead. Afterwards, I raise my sword and knocks him, causing Cain who had his movement sealed to fall. This is unfair. Why? You thought that I would be like those foolish knights and compete in swordsmanship against you who have once reached the realm of legends? Being killed by you after crossing 300 blows, why don't you talk about how unfair it is for a legend to bully a bronze rookie? Look, isn't this way much simpler? I, young man, was I really wrong? I hesitated for a moment before giving my answer. No. You aren't wrong. The decision you made is worthy of the respect of future generations. The one that is wrong is this cruel world who forced you to make a decision. The old knight saved the village, thus failing to accomplish his own mission. As a result, he lost his honor and prestige as a knight, implicating his family. In his later life, he kept questioning himself whether what he did was correct and in the end, he died with that thought lingering in his mind. Pale Justice, that is the name of the soul -sard as well as the questioning screams he directs towards himself. Am I wrong? Is the justice that I insisted on a mistake? Should I have watched as the village get annihilated? Lokar Town, that is the village you saved back then. It has been 70 years since and it has turned from a village of 300 into a small town with a population numbering 10,000. You did well. Is that so? That is great. With a smile on his face. Kane's soul starts to disperse and the only thing that remains is a teardrop gem that scatters ice-cold white light. Soul Gem's tone of pale justice, a portion of Kane's fragmented soul and power is embedded within. A complete pale justice would be formed when it is merged together with Kane's personal sword. Whether justice is pale white or not, is that really important? As long as the things you do doesn't go against your conscience, what does the sounds of the external world matters? That is what I wanted to say but I couldn't. To old Kane, the evaluation of the future generations weren't important. Just the prosperity of the village that was saved is sufficient to show that his choice wasn't wrong. If so, what else has to be said? But reality is often much more cruel than fairy tales. Lokar Town? Indeed, there used to be such a town. But, it has long disappeared once again in the annals of history. Back then, when the different kings were vying for the throne, War was rife and the people living on the land would have underwent five devastating war, at the very least. Even if the villagers survived the assault of the magic beasts, they probably would have died in the war that followed suit. This is the answer that I received from the Civil Affairs Department. Stroking the soul gemstone that was emitting a pale radiance, I shake my head. There is still a long road ahead, let's just take it slow. Suddenly, I recalled something. Wait. That's not right. Don't I have to look for the sword Kane used back then? Who knew where he threw it to? Have I been tricked again? The village has already disappeared in the annals of history, so where the hell should I go looking for a sword? Old man, are you still there? Can you show me the location first before passing on? P.S. This story about the Pale Justice isn't my own creation. It is just that I liked it a lot. That's why I put it together. Just treat it as a tribute to the classics. Pale just as pale, greater than it has the idea of sickness slash lacking in liveliness. In my own opinion, 
it refers to the rigidness of justice, whether there really is only one justice. Chapter 90, The Celestial Tower To me, the Celestial Tower is a name deeply etched in my memory, as well as one that should have long faded in the past. Currently, they are a famous evil organization in the world. In the eyes of the world, they are equal to the famous Druid Kindness Movement Association, Animal Kindness Druid Association, a bunch of mad dogs who bite anyone they manage to lay their hands on. Just like how bad reputed organization often have a noble goal initially, the Celestial Tower was also initially built on ideals. Regardless of whether it is the Celestial Mages who are skilled in astrology, the witches who can divine fate or the mages who are adept in the art of prophecy, on a certain level, they are all able to peer into the future. Thus, under the leadership of a highly respected mage, the Celestial Tower was built on the ideal of using prophecies to make life for the better and to avoid calamities. Then, how did an organization with such lofty ideals turn into the ill-reputed mad dogs of today? Initially, the Celestial Tower's warning stored's natural disasters worked extremely well. At that era, the prophecy skills were very different from the current weak ones. Back then, the prophecy magic system was quite advanced and effective. Connected to the god of fate and the strings of fate, they really managed to avoid calamities and disasters. After a golden era, roughly around AD 200, the Celestial Tower met with trouble. No matter how heavy the price they paid, they are unable to peer into affairs beyond a certain time period. In the end, they came up with a conclusion. From a certain year onward, the Ike continent would be a blank slate. If it was only one seer, they would think that it was due to their lacking abilities. However, if all of the seers reached the same conclusion, then there can only be one answer, the world has been destroyed, there is no future beyond that. All right. Prophesying the end of the world isn't a good thing but at the very least, knowing that it would happen, they could think of ideas to overcome it. But, their efforts were in vain. No matter how they prophesied and divined, they only received a single answer, this world doesn't have a future, they were unable to even confirm where the destruction originated from. Of course, I can understand the reason why they are unable to divine it. All of the life forms in the world originate from the order and the chaos. Naturally you would be unable to prophesy that the destruction which originated from the mother of all beings, even less so, prophesy the timing of the occurrence. All right, this is feels like the turmoil of someone on the death row awaiting his sentence. Unable to obtain any answers, they waited despairingly day after day as doomsday approaches. Then, a coincidence happened, one that would relight their flames of hope. Due to an intervention by the Celestial Tower, a certain young man who was prophesied to become a hero in the future met with an accident, causing the future surrounding him to be unable to be seen. The actions of a Sarah would cause changes in the future. The untimely deaths of historical figures and heroes will affect the entire history. If the fate of the entire world is rattled past a certain extent, will the world which is fated to be destroyed be preserved? Alright, since there is no clear solution to this malady. They decided to try all the possible remedies. Through such a logic, the Celestial Tower found the most direct way to changing fate, causing the untimely deaths of historical figures and heroes. Normally, a seer will try his best to prevent their prophecy from affecting the target of their prophecy. On the contrary, the Celestial Tower began on the rampage, hunting down historical figure and shaking the future back into an unknown state. This isn't an easy task. After all, it is hard to divine accurately a specific prophecy and on many occasions, it all comes down to luck. Not to mention, the seer getting involved in the situation will just make it even more chaotic. Under such circumstances, if an unlucky fellow were to cross the path of the celestial tower, he he, do you think that a future legendary hero would have the ability to resist them as an infant? The dragon slaying hero who would save the masses became slandered as an evil incarnation of demons. The great engineer who pioneered the development of technology became an unpardonable villain and the sacred priestess who saved a country from a calamity got burnt on a stake as a witch. Lies were spewing out from the previously respected seers. Due to their meddling, the path of fate became muddled. Indubitably, this is an act of flipping the table during a poker game where one is fated to lose. Since it will just end in a loss. Something good might come out from messing around with it. This is the desperation of the seers who are driven up the wall. Due to them overdoing it, the strings of fate of the god of fate became messed up, 
alarming the order gods who rarely interfere in the mortal world. They sent retribution down upon them, destroying their main headquarters. Only then, did they halt their actions for a moment. After the retribution, the god of fate took back a large portion of the divination abilities and techniques that he left in the mortal world and cut the connection between his palace of fate and the heavenly realm and the seers in the mortal world causing the standards for divination in the entire world to fall steeply. This was an event that occurred over a thousand years ago. Today, the prophesied doomsday has still yet to come but their sense of killing the future heroes floated to the surface. Eventually, the celestial tower became a huge joke. But, I know that their prophecies weren't wrong. The calamity is just right ahead. To this date, a prophecy directed towards one's future is the greatest taboo a seer could commit. The seers of recent times only divine events and not humans. However, it seems that the celestial tower has yet to be completely destroyed. They are still hiding in a corner, continuing their unfinished job. However, it is hard to say whether they have gone mad from trying to save the world or whether they just want to seek vengeance against the order gods and the entire world. The prophecy regarding the and Carwins from 300 years ago came from them. They also had a hand to play in forcing us up the corner. During my adventuring afterwards, I found their trails in the shadows. Thus, after turning into Emperor Yang I, I dug them up one by one from the corners and slaughtered them one after another. However, Looking at the charred corpse before me in this instant, the insignia of constellations and an eye on the ring on its finger clearly shows that I wasn't thorough enough back then. The darned remains of the celestial tower. To think you all still have the guts to appear before me. Dash 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 in a pitch black room, the seats slid up one by one. All of the participants in this meeting were silent for a long period of time. Eventually, the person on the chairman's seat spoke. Darsos is already getting impatient. Are there still no reports from our scouts? HMPH, the King of Winter Wolves, Lord Lamo says I. I say that we should kill him, not cooperate with him. Come down, our current goal is to wipe away the mist bloodline. We can talk about other things later. It has already been a week. Is there still no news? Darsos is starting to express his dissatisfaction against us. There is really no mistake in calling them mad dogs. When the divination techniques regressed, their targets expanded from future historical figures and future heroes to historical figures and heroes. Anyone of high standing working with them had to be wary of them. It is hard to tell when the knife would be directed towards them. You know that the presence of a church of true God means that the land is a territory of the God, and this will result in the divination techniques of humans to be discounted. At the same time, our scouts also met with some troubles. Un? We send a few druids who can transmogrify into crows. In the church, Cassio is napping under a tree. But, whenever a bird appears in the airspace of the church, a golden line will cut through the skyline and following the call, it would fall to the ground. A few knights would then rush to pick it up. This wildlife would serve well as an additional dish for their dinner. Although I don't understand why Rollin wanted me to shoot down all flying creatures, this is still a good opportunity for me to train my archery. All crows were shot down by an archer. If it weren't for the great agility they displayed while fleeing, they might have ended up as dinner. Looks like they are guarded. What about our reconnaissance team? Our master thieves. They were all blasted to the skies. The entire backyard is filled with gnome landmines as well as all kinds of chain explosives and robot alarms. The security is even tighter than a gnome bank. We suspect that there are at least four to five master engineers who live in the church. By the corner of the wall of the backyard, Clint is in the middle of doing something when his ears suddenly twitch. Then, carrying a basket, he immediately escapes. As expected, someone comes chasing him right after. Damn it. Clint, you are burying landmines all around again. How many times have we said, products of engineering are dangerous and can't be left about casually? What if it explodes on some passerby? Even if it doesn't explodes on others, destroying plants and flowers aren't good as well. Look at how many times have we fixed this wall of the backyard. Yesterday, when I met with a bricklayer, he asked me if I wanted to buy a monthly maintenance pass. Tell me. If the Church of the God of Law turns into the Church of the God of Explosions, will old man Wumians send a strike of lightning down in rage? Hey, listen to me. Stop running. Dyer, finally he gets a name, the law incantationer who had traveled with crows, his traits are, un, everyone has witnessed that for themselves, 
extremely naggy. However, he seems to be the nemesis of the silent glint, which is also why I immediately chose to task him with the job of keeping watch on the explosion maniac. What about our chief spy, Feng Dai? He can easily impersonate a worshipper to sneak in right? Given his experience, he should be able to easily get past that holy knight who is pretending to be strolling about at the entrance but is actually keeping watch. TL, Feng Dai literally means Phoenix Butterfly. Pronunciation for Dai, Di Yi, He. Feng Dai is known as the Thousand Faces and specializes in impersonating all kinds of women. This time, he was quite successfully in impersonating a rich lady and managed to get close with his primary target, Princess Ren. Just that. Since splitting strike. After a feminine roar, the silver-colored sacred sword, which was radiating silver light, flew out of her hands. Tee my grip accidentally loosened. Even though Ren tries her best to act cute, it is unable to cover the fact that she actually managed to turn a swing into a throw. Kelly shakes her head helplessly. Even though Ren was making good progress under Roland's skillful tutelage after switching to become a Justice Knight. Her swordsmanship talent that is way past the golden growing primetime is just too horrible. At least, within a period of time, her swordsmanship will remain as one others will find it hard to look at straight. Then, following the trajectory of the sword with her eyes, she saw the Roland sacred sword stabbing in between the thighs of a rich lady. She immediately panics. Priest, there is a wounded here. Un, a male, spy, knights, gather. I think we better call an undertaker first. After hearing that their most capable spy was exposed in such a ridiculous manner, the all in branch head of the Celestial Tower, Lamos's eye, is in a state of disbelief. It feels like ridiculous things will happen the moment we try to get close with that church. Is that a church of the God of Law or church of the God of Misfortune? Darn it. Right, what about our Master of Concealment? Shadowless Strider Decca? There has never been a place where he can't enter. What about him? He isn't someone who would be defeated by bad luck. It can't be that he failed as well? He. Shadowless Strider Decca. He is famous in certain regions. It is said there isn't a single treasure vault that he is unable to enter and that he had once successfully robbed a blue dragon. Lamos's eye spent much effort to get him into the organization. He is only a silver rank thief but he possesses a legendary artifact that allowed him to move as he pleased. Sewage Cloak, Legendary Artifact the wearer will be turned into a mouse and be received 95% reduction from physical damage using this artifact. He is able to sneak into the treasure vault of any kingdom as he please. Even if he were to meet with a powerful enemy who was able to see through his disguise, he had always managed to sneak away with that near immunity to physical damage. The final transmission from that lord was why is there a magic cat here? Dot it is about dinner time for the church of law and when a certain cat jumped onto the table, I scooped it up and threw it one side. Go! play by one side. Who knows whether you have eaten some dead rats and cockroaches. Bastard, I am not a real cat. Besides, even if I am a real cat, I will be enjoying piles of fish and meat every day. If I were to go hunting for rats, it would be only to play with my prey, there is no reason for me to eat it. HMPH, to think that I had a treasure that I wanted to show you. Such a heartless person, forget it then. What treasure? Hearing the word treasure? My heart immediately moves. He <laughs> he, a transmogrification cloak. It is very suited for you. Do you want to try putting it on? He <laughs> he, you think that I'm a fool. Seeing how you are taking the initiative to pass such stuff to me, it is definitely a cursed item to turn me into a rat or a squirrel. It can't be that I will turn into a slime. Looks like my guess is spot on, you darn cat. No more dinner for you, go eat your rats. At the same time, a short wounded figure is struggling in the backyard. Darn it, what a fearsome meow alien. To think that it would be skilled in the art of brawling and capable of both magic and physical attacks. I almost died from it. Cough, it is fortunate that it left after taking the cloak. Cough, yet another mouthful of blood. Looks like I am quite severely wounded. I probably won't be able to escape from the main entrance or by flipping over the wall. The sewage it is then. After struggling to open the sewage cover and forcefully squeeze himself in it, he realized that someone has beat him to it and is currently waiting for him there. How could there be someone here? If you're the same as me, up here, then please give. Wait, it's not a real person. Gnome exploding dummy. To think it would be in the sewage. Who would be that bored? 
Boom. Boom. There seems to be a significant amount of gunpowder in it. The entire mansion trembled under the explosion. When I shot my gaze towards the dinner table, Clint immediately gets up and reports. Report. Following your orders, I have settled all of the unstable explosives by throwing them into the sewage. The sewage? He he, whose thief is it, to be so unlucky? It's okay, you did well. Work harder next time. Ding. Congratulations, your aura of plague has brought misfortune to its 100th target and has evolved into the star of misfortune aura. The effect of the aura will be boosted by 50% and its effects will prioritize your enemies first. Now that you have reached the 100 mark, you aren't that far from 1000. Work harder. That lad is really unlucky. Anyway, it would be best for you to take a look. Your old friend is there. At this time, the system couldn't resist popping out. When I got to the scene of the explosion, I found the familiar insignia of the Celestial Tower and immediately knew that I met with an old friend. In that instant, I flew into a rage. For a being like mad dogs, the appearance of one means that there would be a den of them around. Kelly. I will be going out for a while. I will leave matters here to you. Diana and Crows, follow me. We will be hunting mad dogs.